Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to Velasco Theater here in Los Angeles, California for an exciting night of professional boxing, all brought to you by Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions and sponsored by Cerveza Tecate, Born Bold, and Casa Mexico Tequila. It's in the taste. And we're set to go with our first bout tonight, four rounds this in the Super Featherweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white trunks, trimmed in red, he weighed in officially 129 pounds. In five professional bouts, his record stands at three victories, two defeats with three wins coming by way of knockout. Hailing from Agua Prieta, Mexico, here is Emmanuel Valadez. <laughs> and next, his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing tonight green, trimmed in silver with both the flag of Mexico and the USA. He weighed in an even 130 pounds and brings a perfect record into the ring tonight. Three bouts, three victories, all three wins coming by way of knockout. Here's the undefeated super featherweight from Glendora, California, Jose Gonzalez. And your referee in charge of the action, Christy Rosario. You're, you look good right here and here. Here's a foul line. Keep them up. We went over the instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. Good luck, guys.
official time, two minutes, 42 seconds. Round number one, referee Christy Rosario puts a halt to the bout. Your winner by KO victory, he is still undefeated, Jules Gonzalez.
The following is a production of Golden Boy Media and Entertainment. A rainy Southern California. Yes, it does rain in L.A. And tonight they're going to be raining some punches at the Belasco Theater in the downtown L.A. Issue L.A. Fight Club. Charles Gonzalez. Texas Javier Martinez. Followed by Tino Nava out of West Side Boxing. He puts the perfect record off the line. There you see downtown Los Angeles traffic crawling. The biggest storm of the year has hit Los Angeles, but Doug Fisher and I, we made it to the Belasco Theater for another edition of the L.A. Fight Club. And the crowd is filling in, and so is Joe Martinez. Battle of the traffic, he got there, and he's ready to go with our next fight of the night. From Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, here is Miguel, Miguel. And next is opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing white, trimmed with the flag of Mexico, he weighed in 128 pounds even. Tonight, he makes his professional debut, joining us from Dallas, Texas. Here is Javier Martinez. And your referee in charge of the action is Zach Young. Chief Zagat, Jones Protector. Okay. Poquito aquí y aquí está bien. Okay. Buena suerte los dos. Good luck. Very good. Is it me and you, Dr. Wallace? Look at the tail of the tape for this fight with Martinez making his pro debut against Miguel Barajas. Yeah, Javier Martinez is seven years younger at age 20. He has a, the height advantage, but Barajas has the reach advantage. We are underway. Pro debut for Javier Martinez at Dallas, Texas. He's 20 years old. He's got the green, white, and red trunks. He's going up against veteran Miguel Barajas, 27-year-old. Barajas coming out swinging wild immediately. Welcome to the professionals. Javier Martinez, the headgear is off. And we're letting him go here. That is what Barajas is doing from Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico. Javier Martinez, 20 years old, had Olympic aspirations. Fell short, signed with Golden Boy. Barajas is saying, welcome to the professional yeah. ranks, young man. There's no trepidation, no hesitation, no nerves from Barajas. Never been stopped in his three pro bouts. He's two and one, so he has a winning record. He brings that fighter's pride into the ring with him. And he's traveled before. His last fight was in California, so he's been broken in on the terms of his travel. Body shot landed by Martinez. More good body work. A stocky fighter. Matching them up tough. Usually when you get your pro debut, you have a guy who's also tentative. No, not, not here with Barajas in the black. And generally speaking, uh, when a young fighter is turning pro, somebody who's under 22 or 21, matchmaker, matchmakers tend to put him in there with somebody who's been stopped before. It's almost like the, the pro debut is a gimme, and it's also designed as a confidence boost. When you get that knockout, you feel great, you make a splash, you move on to the next level. Um, but this guy is tough, Barajas. He just took a nice one-two and another, another one. right hand, yeah. Martinez from Dallas, but now living in Southern California and training with one of the best around, Ben Lira, in his corner, training him. Body shot, body shot, more body work. Going upstairs is Martinez. Good work from Martinez. He has the, the tighter technique, the more compact punches on the inside. Doesn't look like a kid who's transitioning into the program. Mind you, it's only the first round. But he looks smooth in there. 
he's poised. And um, he's in there with somebody who set a fast tempo, so that, that speaks well of him. Punches are crisp. Our Martinez. Doesn't look like a 20-year-old either. This is my first look at him. Um, I've heard of him and his amateur reputation, but there isn't a lot of footage of his amateur fights on YouTube or floating around out there. So learning what kind of style he has and learning about his temperament all in this first round, and we'll learn more if Barajas can take him the distance. Quick left hooks landing by Martinez. There's one, two, 10 seconds to go in the opening round. We're scheduled for four, the Belasco Theater heating up here between Martinez and Barajas on a Friday night. set in the first round, set by Barajas, but young Javier Martinez answered back in kind. The overhand rights found the home as well as those left hooks to the body, and that's what Ben Lira wants more from Martinez. He wants more body work here in the second round. Ben Lira, legendary in Southern California boxing circles, is now the main man for Javier Martinez. He's also in the corner of Luis Feliciano, who will make it his debut later on tonight, the fighter out of Milwaukee and Lira. Right, I know I've seen him recently. Yes, he is in the corner of Joseph Diaz Jr. Joseph Sr. is the main trainer. Then Lira, the sage advisor, working with him. And Jojo Diaz with some big news coming. He's tweeting that I got big news. Well, send us the news ready, Jojo. Let us know what's going on. Well, right now we're watching Javier Martinez and Miguel Barajas. Make sure you use the hashtag RingTVLive. Send us your tweets, Durant Sports and Dougie Fisher. As Linus, our man in Philadelphia, who's also our, our quasi amateur scout, said uh, Linus, the team ex Javier, the Twitter for Javier Martinez, said he likes to bang. Known that from his Pan Am days. So this is his style, what he likes to do. And in the pro, it kind of benefits him, right, Doug? Absolutely. If you like to go to the body, if you like to sit on your punches, better suited for the professional ranks than the amateur ranks. Uh, Barajas is a competent boxer. He box a little bit. Obviously, he likes to stand and bang. Now, obviously, he can take it. I don't think his hands are as heavy or as sharp as Martinez's hands. He kind of loops his punches more. But he's a scrapper. He's a grinder, and he's getting some work done, forcing Martinez back into a neutral corner. Or, I'm sorry, into the blue corner. Stop punching. Stop, stop, stop. Watching. You're right, Doug. You said in the first round, most guys, your pro debut, to give you somebody who's going to give you the least amount of resistance. And Miguel Barajas is coming in here to let his hands go and try to upset. Got a line on his line also. He's 2-1. and one. And some punches at times. And you'll notice that Barajas has those Fleto Reyes gloves. Which you thought me, that's that puncher's glove. You can make a nice tight fist with those gloves. I, I, I like the effort from both fighters. Oh, yeah. Good opening bout here. Another great addition to the Velasco Theater, the L.A. Fight Club. Barajas set the tone at the opening bell, and neither fighter has backed off since. Oh. Martinez answered in kind, and he's landing the cleaner shots. He's got the tighter technique. He's landing punches between the winging shots of Barajas. But Barajas remains game, and he's still working. I think he's lost this round, but he was competitive in this round. Also working is Martinez. Nice, quick, compact punches. And that is going to get counted. That's going to count. That's going to count. He, right at the bell, Zach Young is like, no, 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 that went down, kicking everybody out. Six. 
Martinez, eats the punch, goes down right at the bell. His gloves did touch. And this is a, okay, and this Doug, is. you were just saying, that was a round for Barajas. Yeah, he wins this round now. It was, I was saying Barajas was, was very competitive in the round, but he takes the round by scoring that knockdown. And he may have taken it by a 10-8 margin, which is significant in a scheduled six-round bout. Let's see this knockdown. This knockdown. Landed high on the head, he was off balance. And that punch landed right before the bell, so. Referee is within his uh, rights to call it a knockdown. They hear him say he was off balance and got hit. He might have also heard that bell, and you know, you ease up. Right, Doug, this one is scheduled for six yeah, rounds. If this was a, a schedule for four rounds, I would Danger. say the young man's record is in jeopardy because it's very hard to bounce back from a 10-8 round into the scheduled four-round fight. Miguel Barajas coming in, looking for the upset. The fighter in black from Guadalajara, Mexico. He is 2-1 in his career. His second bout got the stoppage. His last time in the ring suffered his first loss to Michael Morato here in California. And I think Martinez's pride was ruffled a little bit. Getting right up against his opponent, chest to chest, forehead to forehead. Maybe he's fighting with a little bit of uh, emotion, more emotion than he had in the first round. And I like the poise that he had in round one. Now it looks like he's swinging, like he's trying to get some payback here. And that could play into the hands of his opponent. Third round of action, Javier Martinez making his pro debut from Dallas, Texas. Got the white trunks. The Mexico trim. There it is, Barajas in the black. Uppercuts being landed by both fighters. Martinez matched up tough here in his pro debut. This is not what they expected in your pro debut. It was just surprising that Doug, in his debut, he gets six rounds. That should tell you what they think of him, that yes. they're bringing him up that quick. But he went down at the end of the second, got caught, and now he's eating some more punches from the veteran Miguel Angel Barajas. Yeah, it's become a, a, a physical affair. I don't think that's what Ben Lara wants in the corner. We're, we're seeing his medal being tested in his pro debut. And so that's a good thing. We know the guy's an action fighter. We know he's got the instincts of a fighter. He goes down, he wants to get up. He wants to, to assert control uh, of the fight. But I think he could be boxing a little bit smarter here in the third round. I think he could utilize a little bit of um, distance, a little bit of lateral movement, work his jab, and throw in the hard punches when he sees the openings, you see his face. There's blood in his mouth. He shouldn't be bleeding uh, from the mouth. He really shouldn't. And out of his pro debut, eats a He's getting kind of wild. Yeah, he's. I don't. You know, he's lost his poise. This he, is the kind of guy you fight when you're eight and zero, not a, a zero and zero. Ralph Aredia, his manager, decided to take this one. Well, the, and the thing is, 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 you know, it was a Look flash knockdown. It what? It wasn't like. Martinez was hurting around. It's not like he's in jeopardy of losing the fight. It's a six round fight, but he's out here fighting like this is the last round. Like he has yeah. to win this round to win the fight. That's not really the case. Um, I think that's something they need to kind of settle him down for his, his, his next professional fight. But this is great stuff for the fans. Yeah, great for the fans. Great for Barajas who's making a name for himself. Yes. It shouldn't be this tough in your pro debut. Martinez working both sides of the body. Maybe stunned Barajas with that punch, forces the older man into the ropes. 
fourth round. It's scheduled for six. Make his pro debut, Javier Martinez in white. Miguel Angel Barracas looking for the upset in black. Another thing, Doug, you and Steve have taught me this. When you make the transition from an amateur to a pro, your first fight, the gloves feel different. These guys are throwing big haymakers. But now when you're going up against a grown man, they can wear these punches. Yeah, and the, the pace that the older man set has forced the younger man to exert himself in a way he normally wouldn't in an amateur bout. In an amateur bout, it's more about volume. It's not about sitting down and punching hard. He's got the volume and he's punching hard with every punch. He's got to be feeling it. In fact, you can see the fatigue in his body. Right hand landed by Martinez, who's training in Big Bear. Carlo Lucena, director of travel for Golden Boy, always knows where these guys are living and training. She books their travel, so getting good work up there in Big Bear. Well, ben Lara is part of the Gennady Golovkin oh, camp, right. so he's right. up there often. And he's an assistant to Golovkin's head trainer, Abel Sanchez. Of course, Lara is a terrific trainer in his own right. He's developed countless amateur standouts in the style of professionals over the decades. Now we're seeing some head movement. Now we're seeing a little bit of savvy, which we should be seeing from uh, a U.S. national amateur standout. The right hand landed, but Barack has shown he has that chin. And wear it. I like what I see from Martinez, but he doesn't look like a kid making a pro debut. They just matched him up really tough tonight. Yeah, no, he actually looks like somebody who has six or seven pro bouts under his belt yeah. already. I mean, obviously, he has the temperament of not only a professional, but of a fighter. I just think he needs to pace himself a little bit, and I think he needs the same poise that he had in, in round one in these rounds. And left hook by Martinez, catches Barajas. Barajas can take a shot. Yeah. He's not, what was that line, the, the job of the Tijuana taxi cab driver? He's not one of those? <laughs> no. Well, you know, some of those Tijuana cab drivers are very tough. Oh, we've seen them. Yeah. They come in. My favorite Uber driver now, Sidi Salido. <laughs> Africa landed nice from Martinez. We're watching him in Dallas, Texas, of course. He's a big Cowboys fan. Oh, one, two. Oh, he's stunned. That one. Yeah, he's stunned Barajas. Blood out of the mouth of Barajas, letting it go, yeah. and it is over. He wanted it. Fourth round stoppage for Javier Martinez in his pro debut. The kid from Dallas, Texas had to earn it, stepped it up big in the fourth, and he ends the night for Miguel Barajas. He worked very hard for that stoppage. He pressed hard. Um, I didn't see Barajas complain a whole lot. It looks like Barajas' tank had run dry, and he was just on the cusp of being overwhelmed. As Mana is jamming, Oh, Overhand right to the ear of Barajas, followed by a left hook to the temple. Forces the older man to the ropes, lands an overhand right, followed by a left hook. In his work set, that left hook. It's all hooks and crosses here, one-twos. He's just working here, forcing the stoppage. And he is an all-action fighter. The first time in his career that Miguel Barajas is stopped. Went at it, he traded with him. Young fighter. Able to get his hands going to the fourth, ends the night. Big smile for the 20-year-old. Yeah, he had to fight hard. You know, after three rounds, this was, this was an even fight. I scored rounds one and three for Martinez, but Barajas had a 10 out, 10-8 uh, round two. So this this fight was, was in the balance. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes at the official time. Two minutes, 44 seconds, round number four. We have your winner by KO victory in his professional debut, Javier Martinez Jr. There he is, the 20 year old Dallas, Texas, Javier Martinez Jr. Team X Javier is his Twitter. If you want to check him out? Oh, the boy signed him, likes him, and a good one. Thanks to. Guy Moore, photographer watching us tonight. You're right, those kids were in a war. They went at it. As we see highlights from this fight, this was the stoppage. And just look at the face of the 20-year-old former amateur standout. Yeah. There was a nick under his eye. There was blood on his lips. There was a trickle of blood from one of his nostrils. He was in a fight. Welcome to the professional ranks, young man.
Yeah. Everybody's coming at you. And when you're a Golden Boy fighter, these opponents know about you because it's an opportunity for them to not, if they don't beat you, if they come out and shine and look good, you get the call back for another guy. And fighting in Los Angeles, the money's a little bit better. Absolutely. And looking at highlights from the entire fight, the round one was brisk. Both men landed their shots. Martinez had the quicker hands, tighter technique, more snap on the end of his punches. Combination, body hit combination there as he gets the older man against the ropes. Center of the ring, though, Barajas, he had his moments as well. Punches had some, some loop to them. He didn't land as hard, but he landed shots. He landed his left hook. Did his share of body shots as well. Of course, the flashier eye-catching punches belong to the younger man. Stoppage. Martinez, again, he's showing us that he has the instincts, not just a professional, but of a fighter. When somebody hurts him or hurts his pride, because I don't think he was hurt by that, that end of the round knockdown in round two. I think his pride was hurt. He gets up and he wants to make something happen. At working it with Ben Lira and Big Bear, when you're in the Triple G camp, obviously not working with them, but you see what the best of the best in the business are doing, you're running alongside of them. You gotta get more motivated. And I like what I saw from Javier Martinez tonight. Does it look like a kid who made his pro debut and they're working with him? But he really came out and looked good tonight against Miguel Barajas. Barajas stopped for the first time in his career. Stay tuned. More from Los Angeles on Ring TV Live.
And there you see Tommy Smith coming out of New Orleans, Louisiana, the Bayou. Nike Man is his nickname. The reason you see underneath his right eye, he has the Nike swoosh logo. I don't know if he uh, won, he was a track star, if he sponsored. He said no, he just on a dare one night. His friends told him to get the Nike tattoo, so he got two of them. Friend, his friend said, just do it. Exactly. He did it. And there you see Tino Nava with the throwback Mexico soccer jersey, a three uniform. Probably one of the best jerseys that they've ever had. They don't wear it anymore, but that was one, I think, it was the 94 World Cup. Looking smooth, Tino Nava, out of the West Side Boxing. And you hear it getting loud as the West Side Boxing crew, the Marching Skulls, they come strong, they come deep. Product of S Side Boxing Club and LA Fight Club series. Fights have taken place. Marching Skull, Salcedo Brothers with them. They're always coming up with something new with their uh, t-shirts. Uh, Rafael Gramajo, stable mate right behind him. Yeah, and Nava reminds me a lot of developed right before our eyes on well, this Well, fans, we are set to go with the next bout tonight. Four rounds, this in the super featherweight division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, trimmed in gold and black, he weighed in officially 126 and one half pounds. In seven professional bouts, his record stands at three victories, three defeats, one draw, and two wins coming by way of knockout from New Orleans, Louisiana. Here is Thomas Nike Man Smith. <laughs> And across the ring stands his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing leopard print trunks, trimmed in black, he weighed in officially 127 and three quarter pounds. In four professional bouts, he stands perfect with four victories. No defeats, one win coming by way of knockout. Hailing from and fighting out of Los Angeles, California, here is the undefeated Tenochtitlan, Tino no! And your referee in charge of the action, Christy Rosario. I'm gonna let you work in here. That's a little high. Okay, so right here and here. This is perfect. I'm working right here. Keep it above the line. We went over the instructions in the dressing room. Obey my commands at all times. Let's have a good, clean fight. Good luck, guys. Christy. Making the announcement, letting the fighters know. This is downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> Underway, Tino Nava. The leopard print trunks. <laughs> Thomas Smith, who's 3-3-1, three, three 29 years old, from New Orleans, Louisiana. And speed from light height and reach advantage. Boxing from the, uh, the outside, trying to take advantage of his height and reach. Chin is sort of exposed there. He doesn't even touch his chin a little bit. But he's never been stopped. First time fighting in Los Angeles for Smith. Around a while. His hands down. He's got the speed with him. This is fought in Texas, New York, Nevada. Last time he was in the ring in January. About a month ago against Joshua Hernandez, lost in six rounds in Illinois. He's well traveled. Yes. Three and two in his last five bouts. Like I said, he's never been stopped, so he, he can either take a shot or he's not that easy to hit. Tino Nava went to Hamilton High School here in Southern California, not too far from the gym. Told the story before, was a five foot five, 200 pound soccer player. Went to the West Side Boxing just to get in better shape for soccer. Fell in love with the sport. 
Love the conditioning and left soccer for boxing. Here he is now as a professional, 4 and 0. Oh. I'd say boxing's been good to him. Yeah. Th physique wise, I think uh, confidence and maturity wise. And in terms of his exposure, he's actually become a ticket seller. And he's groomed well by the Salcedo Brothers, Westside Boxing. That he's one of the kids. Oh, you love this. He comes early and he stays late, and you have to kick him out. You have to tell him, no, you can't train. Your body needs rest, believe it or not. I'll say no brothers, I think. Up out in training. He has the kind of style, at least from his pro debut, he was all pressure, just a pure volume puncher. Pro debut went four rounds, and he was almost out of gas yeah. in the final round. Of his Learned to pace himself a little bit. Uh, and to let his hands go. Learn that he doesn't have to throw every punch in the book in the opening minute of the opening round. Oh, look at this patience. We used to see him just come throw 8,000 punches in the first 30 seconds. And that's just what's his style at the gym. Just work, work, work. Yeah, he was the energizer bunny. Progress in your career, you notice. Hey, there's, there are four rounds for a reason. There's six rounds for a reason. Final seconds of the up and around. Tino Nava, Thomas Smith, Velasco Theater, downtown LA. They're telling him cuerpo, that's the body. So the plan was to go to the body and you're going upstairs to the face. Go back to the body, stick to our plan. That's what the Salcedo brothers were telling. I don't know which one it was. It was not to Jose. One punch, they're not going to do nothing. I need you hurt this. Osvaldo de Bosk is the trainer for Thomas Smith. Nike man. I'm gonna get a Nike tattoo. I better be sponsored. There's <laughs> 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 no free advertising here on Ring TV for me and me and Doug. But if you guys <laughs> not, <laughs> cannot be bought. Velasco <laughs> Theater, downtown Los Angeles. The next time. Golden Boy will be at the Velasco, be March 10th, as Chimpa Gonzalez will be the main event. Then after that, Golden Boy on ESPN gets going. Fancy Springs Resort and Casino. Jason Quigley and Glenn Tapia is the main event, a good one. Quigley actually sparring at the Rock Gym with El Perro Angulo. Getting some work in. Opening up the show that night will be Sal Sanchez, the younger brother of Emilio Sanchez, the pro, not amateur, Sanchez, training with Joel Diaz and Indio Antonio Diaz. He is 2-0. Oh. He'll be opening up the show that night. He's watching us right now on Ring TV in the Coachella Valley. And now Tino Nava, Thomas Smith going at it. They're yes. progressing Nava nicely in his career. Yeah, absolutely. And I think Smith is by far the trickiest opponent that Nava has had to be in with. Having to figure out how to cut the ring off of somebody who utilizes lateral movement, somebody who's got quicker hands. Smith is able to tag now, though, with, with the right hands. There's not a lot of power. He's not really you know, pivoting his, his back foot and, and getting his hips into those shots, but they are scoring blows. And I did score round one for Smith. thought it was close and competitive, but I thought I got a little more done. They saw him at the weigh-in. He's in full tights, nice and calm. First thing you tell me, Doug, Make sure you guys say my nickname. It is Nike Man. But we've said it plenty of times for you, yeah. Thomas Smith. He was just excited to be in Southern California, talking to him briefly. It was just cool, good venue. And he said, fighting for Golden Boy. As we mentioned with other fighters, these guys don't come in to lay down because they know the, the exposure they're getting on a show like this. It might be a club show, but there are a lot of people watching. Yeah, usually on a club show, on a four-rounder like this. Not televised, and it's not... Story with Lasco Theater Fight Club Series, and you don't have Oscar De La Hoya right there watching. It means a lot to these fighters. You hear the Tino chant, Westside Boxing. You see the purple shirts right there, ringside. 
That area where the West Side Boxing Group is at is standing room only. If you ever want to go to the Belasco Theater, it is first come, first serve, a great opportunity to experience boxing up close and personal. And the thing that they do at the West Side Boxing, you buy a ticket from them, you get a shirt. So everybody comes deep. Ticket, boxing, Friday night, what more do you need? Final seconds of the second round. Tino Nava, Thomas Smith. Came up to be a nice one. This is scheduled for only four rounds. Make sure you keep those tweets coming. Third round of action, Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher. Keep the tweets coming. You see them all. Linus, of course, we see yours, but KT Moore, the, uh, my, my man, the photographer. I said it there, Rangulo. I said he's sparring Jason Quigley as Quigley prepares for his fight with Glenn Tapia. Both on veterans. Out there at the Rock, Jimmy Carson. When Nava is landing punches wherever he can, at landing on the hips and the backside, Orleans fighter, it was a nice lead right landed. Looks like Nava is, is finally finding his range, finally trying to put punches together when he's inside. I think the first two rounds he was having trouble with the hand speed, movement and also whenever Smith would tie him up would hold him when they were in close and he's figuring out ways to get around that referee Christine Rosario is letting Nava bang away at the hips and the thighs and wherever he can land oh so, the waistband body shots that's something you pick up as you're moving on uppercut landed by Smith a nice one for the fighter from the bayou Nava seems to be his rhythm right now. So he's going to up and he's just about to go. Tenochtitlan Nava, named by his dad. He's from Durango, his mom from Sinaloa. Uh, he, he's going to get a warning from Rosario. It looked like there were some elbows that Smith made in the back of Nava's head. Smith throws that one punch at a time. Body he needs a, oh, a nice one-two combination. And he needs to... Nava on the outside. Needs to hit him with a stiff jab or a quick lead right as Nava tries to make his way in. Have Nava thinking twice about getting in close because in close, Nava's going to out hustle him or just rough him up. Body work. What the Salcedo brothers told Nava to do. Upstairs with a quick hook. More digging. So he's digging with the left. Answer with a quick left hook also. Right hand. The best round for Nava so far. And we should point out, Nava is not like Javier Martinez or Luis Feliciano, who's making his pro debut later hard. He wasn't a U.S. amateur champion. He wasn't a, a nationally ranked amateur. He was a local amateur. At 50 or 60 routes. That, that's about it. So he's doing a lot of his learning and the development, the polishing uh, of, of this young diamond in the rough. It's happening as his pro career progresses. Final seconds of the third round. A good round for Tenochtitlan Nava, the Blasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Jab in there, touching jab. 
Close. Tries to let his hands go to the body. Right hand from Smith. That's rough. Bias, tell him not enough for you to win. I don't think so. You don't think so. Yeah, he's been telling him that for the last two rounds, no. which is probably what he needs to, to tell his, uh, his fighter. Smith is the opponent. He's the visiting fighter. I scored round one for Smith. I can make an argument that maybe he could have won round two. But Los Angeles is Nava's hometown. Fourth and final round. Thomas Smith started his career. Lost, draw, win, loss. TKO, KO, and then a loss. Been around, knows what it's like going up against the judges. Going up against these junk fighters, and you see Tenochtitlan and Nava coming out. Probably his toughest match to fight in his young career. Yeah, I would say stylistically, yep. Smith has been the most difficult. I don't know if he's been a, a huge physical task for Nava. He hasn't been able to hurt Nava, and he's not letting his hands go enough to really win these rounds and, and bust up the young pressure fighter. But he's presented some problems that Nava is uh, best to solve. Tino, I, think, I think Nava has. Tino grinds it. First fight, four rounds. Second fight, four rounds. Then he had a second round KO of Juan Bryan. Then he got the majority decision in November over Enrique Vasquez. Went the distance. But like you were saying last round, Doug, he doesn't have that amateur pedigree. He's learning and he's evolving, which is good. You want to see the progression in this young fighter. Now, a lot of the styles that he's seeing as a professional, this is the first time he's seen that style. Like more extensive uh, amateurs, they, they've seen a lot of styles before they turn pro. They know what to do. I, I, I would guess the looks that Smith is giving Nava, this is new to him. This is new. He knows 23 years old. Went into the gym at 15. Had, you know, he was trying to lose weight. It was a hobby for him as a high school athlete other high school kids are traveling the world like you've had your Hector Tanahata's or the, go, trying to go to the Olympic aspirations the Virgil Ortiz those kind of kids who just you know, they're special yeah and sometimes these kids are like homeschooled or they yeah. have traveling tutors they could be allowed to travel with the US yeah, there's different levels of fighters and Tino Nava grinding out tonight against Thomas Smith we're seeing, we're seeing some wrinkles yeah. with, with Nava's game. We're seeing the, the, the bob and weave. We're seeing some head and upper body movement. Faints. This is a good one for four. Kind of wish it would have been six. You could see how they would progress a little bit more. Yeah, we would see, um, in, in that regard, his conditioning would be yep. tested a little bit. Oh, they do Culver City stairs, and they run at Dorsey High. You know the conditioning is good with the West Side Boxing. They can hang with you on a Sunday and put Schwartz. <laughs> He's welcome. Everybody's welcome. No, no, no. We just watch your periscope on Sunday. <laughs> no. We don't need to run those sprints. Alvis had a good round three yep. and a good round four um, because he, he listened to his corner. And that'll do it. Good four rounds between Team Oak Nava and Thomas Smith. It'll go to the judges. Hear the crowd. Get the little money's worth for them. Came to see their fighter. I think Nava won it three rounds to one, but I wouldn't be shocked if one of the judges had this fight even. The first two rounds for Smith, the second two rounds for Nava. So a majority decision victory for Nava would not shock. Look at some replays of this fight between Nava and Smith. Nava and Smith's grill, he's working the body, he's moving his head the jab and the straight rights. Smith still finds a home for that right cross occasionally. But it was Nava who was the aggressor throughout this fight. Why I think the judges will favor him. Nice right hand.
Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards, and here are the totals. Both judges, Rudy Barragan and Jerry Cantu, have the score 40 to 36. Ray Corona, 39-37. All for your winner by unanimous decision. And still undefeated, Tenoch Titla, Tino Nava. Tino Nava improves the 5-0, got the decisions with the cards. Learning experience, good hard-fought win for the 23-year-old out of Westside Boxing. Thomas Smith, the veteran, falls a 3-4-1. and one. Steady progression from Nava, which is what you want to see from your fighter. Yeah, he, he's not going to be one to make quantum leaps. Doesn't have the, the talent, uh, the exceptional talent, the athleticism, or amateur background. But he's a solid young grinder. I noted learning as he's progressing and he's adding wrinkles to his game. It used to be just pressure and volume punching. A more poise, there's some head movement. We're seeing up in the weave on the side. We're seeing the jab. Nice punch selection once he's inside. Not just a windmill anymore. And is learning, and is learning. Oh, you can ask for it. And more action coming up, 7 o'clock, Luis Feliciano, Renato Gomez, and then Tito Manzanares from downtown Los Angeles. You're watching Ring TV Live.
The following is a production of Golden Boy Media and Entertainment. Downtown Los Angeles, yes, it does rain in Southern California. One of the heaviest storms of the year making their way to LA and so is Luis Feliciano making his pro debut from Milwaukee. Renato Gomez from San Diego, he's undefeated. And the main event in his US debut, Roberto Tito Manzanares is coming up next on Ring TV Live. Downtown Los Angeles on a Friday night, another edition of the LA Fight Club, one of the hottest club scenes in all the United States. And we have some action back card coming your way. Guys making their debuts, guys looking to take the next step. And there you see the Staples Center. We're a couple blocks away from there at the historic Velasco Theater, the home of the LA Fight Club. Our call main tonight, a fighter Golden Boy is very excited about, Genaro Conde Gámez out of San Diego, managed by Robert Garcia, trained by his father. Go with what? I like this downtown. Oh, we're still... Okay, and our opening bout from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Boricua, Luis Feliciano takes on veteran Angel Rodriguez. Feliciano, highly touted amateur, a graduate.
The following is a production of Golden Boy Media and Entertainment. The song says it never rains in Southern California. Live, the biggest rainstorm of the year has hit LA, and Luis Feliciano is in LA ready to make his pro debut. And then Renato Gomez, he's undefeated, perfect record on the line from San Diego. And making his U.S. debut, Roberto Tito Manzanares from Los Mochis, Sinaloa. That's next on RNC Live. Downtown Los Angeles skyline around there, the headquarters for Oscar De La Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions. And Friday night, that means it's time for the LA Fight Club, our main event, eight round super lightweight division, Dito Manzanares, only one loss on his record from Los Mochis, takes on former world champion, Platano Diaz. Our co-feature from San Diego, El Conde, De Genaro Gámez, 3-0, three KOs all in the first round against Rugged veteran Alejandro Ochoa. That's six rounds in the co-feature. And opening up the alumni from Marquette University, the Boricua, Luis Feliciano against veteran Ángel Rodriguez. Inside the Velasco Theater for another edition of the LA Fight Club in downtown Los Angeles, alongside the editor of Ring TV, Dot com, one of the best boxing scribes out there with a great mailbag on Friday and Mondays. Doug Fisher, I'm Bethel Duran. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in the United States and around the world. Make sure you send us your tweets, Duran Sports, Dougie Fisher, and use the hashtag RingTVLive. We love interacting with you all around with the boxing fans. And Doug, we look at the card, you're like, okay, a debut, cool, we've heard about him. A kid who's 3-0, and we've seen him, some knockouts. But that main event, when you look at Tito Manzanares, a fighter from uh, who was born in Phoenix, lives in Mexico, making his U.S. debut, and they match up against wo former world champion Platano Diaz, that's an intriguing one. Yeah, he, you know, he's young, but he has that experience. His record is an astounding one for someone so young. 33 wins, just one loss, 27 knockouts. Beyond prospect status, even though he's just 22 years of age, he is a potential junior welterweight contender. So we want to see how good he is right off the bat. Gamaliel Diaz is a former champion at 130 pounds and he's fought everybody. And he's not too old, he's not too long in the tooth to where he can't go rounds and give a young fighter different looks and, and different types of challenges, be they physical or mental. There you see Roberto Manzanares mentioned, born in the United States from Phoenix. Uh, now living in Los Mochis, Sinaloa, came in rib, had a three we camp in Southern California. Latino Diaz from Michoacan, Mexico, 40, 15, and three. And you look at some of the names that he's gone up against. Like, I was fight everybody. Jorge right? Linares, um, Takashi Miura is the guy who beat him for the title. And he's had some wins. He was the guy who was the first man to beat Robert Guerrero. Yes, he did. Uh, and he's, be he's, he's taken the O of other up-and-comers that turned out to be um, very good professionals. So he's one of those dangerous grinders. He can box. He can fight. He can be dirty. Uh, he knows what he's doing in there. Don't let the 15 losses fool you. He has those losses because he's been in it very tough. And even in those losses, he's been competitive. Has been competitive, so don't let the record fool you. This should be a good one in the main event as we're waiting for our opening bout to make their way to the ring. And Luis Feliciano, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, making his pro debut. He was a fighter that was really close on the brink of getting to the Olympics, didn't go his way. Now, hasn't fought much in the last two years because of trying to compete for different uh, tournaments. But in the meantime, he got his degree in criminology, the Boricua. Grew up in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A lot of hype around this kid, and I think a lot of it is merited also. Well, he participated in two U.S. Olympic trials, 2012 and 2015. That's why he turns pro at the somewhat advanced age 
of 23 years of, uh, of age. Uh, a lot of guys after 2012 of not making that Olympic squad, they would have turned pro. Yep. They would have turned pro at, you know, 19, 20 years old. Feliciano kept the dream alive. He didn't make it, so now he's turning pro. So he's, he's mature, and I think Golden Boy recognizes that because they matched him pretty tough. But Michael Rodriguez is a tough out. Just two weeks ago, he fought Jonathan Navarro, yes, a seven and O prospect, and he gave Navarro some a challenge. He, he gave him some fits. That was after almost five years of Angel Rodriguez inactivity. Was it because of anything else? He talked to him. He said, "I just was fed up with the sport of boxing and losing fights that I thought I had won back and forth. Coming as the opponent, fought Navarro a couple weeks ago." Gave him a good challenge, and afterwards he said, Roberto Diaz, the matchmaker for Golden Boy, said, I like what I saw. What are you doing in two weeks? There we go. And he's That's old school that he took the fight, that kind of quick turnaround. Rodriguez is tough, but he's also cagey. And whatever ring Russ had built up over those five years being out of the ring, he knocked him off in those six rounds that he went with Jose Navarro. And the fact that he, he wasn't even dropped against Navarro, who, who nope. can punch, that tells you something. Navarro with the nickname Thunder. Keep those shout outs coming. I mean, the shot. Keep the tweets coming. You'll get your shout out, just like Gail Falkenthal in San Diego, Miss Fight Lady in San Diego. Appreciate you guys. Looking forward to watching your fighter in Hinato Gomez from San Diego and everybody in the Milwaukee area, all the Wariquas that are watching. And round by round boxing. Gotta love Durant Sports and Dougie Fisher on the call. Hey, by the way, we love doing the call also. Led by Will Wright and Luis and Ted Spears tonight. David Tatro, the executive vice president of Golden Boy Media and Entertainment. And there you see the man in the corner, Abel Sanchez and Ben Lira from Big Bear. Abel Sanchez, you might recognize him? Yes, that is Triple G's manager. Head trainer. Uh, yeah, head trainer. And a Hall of Fame worthy trainer who's been around for more than decades. And there's been a lot of snow in Big Bear to get down the mountain. Not, Not easy. easy. <laughs> Not easy today. <laughs> yeah. Feliciano's a. Uh, Training partner Javier Martinez also made his debut earlier this evening. The fighter out of Dallas, Texas, had a fourth round stoppage over Miguel Barajas. Both of them are being managed by Heredia Manager. Ralph Heredia. Señoras and señores, esta primera pelea está pactada por César Saldos en el peso super ligero. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, six rounds of boxing this in the super lightweight division. Los tres jueces por ese combate, the three judges scoring this bout at ringside, Jerry Cantu, Ray Corona, and Christy Rosario. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, encargado, el referee Raúl Caiz. Presentar primero en la esquina azul, con los pantaloncillos rojos y un peso de 139 libras y medias. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing red trunks, he weighed in officially 139 and one half pounds. Con un record de cinco victorias, siete derrotas, tres empates y cuatro ganadas por knockout. His professional record stands at five victories with seven defeats, three draws, and four wins coming by way of knockout from Houston, Texas. Here is Anke Rodriguez. Y su oponente en la esquina roja, con los pantaloncillos azul con blanco y rojo y un peso igual, 139 libras y medias. His opponent across the ring tonight wears both the flag of Mexico and Puerto Rico. He weighed in 139 and one half pounds. Esta noche él está haciendo su debut profesional tonight, making his professional debut from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Here is Luis Feliciano. Yeah, too hard, too hard. Yeah, no, we're just going to drop him there. Okay. Luis, let's go. Okay, Leo and audio. Remember, punches here are fine. Shake hands. Good luck to both of you. Raul Kai, senior third man in the ring. Look at the teletape, Doug. And Feliciano at age 23. He's 12 years younger. He is the taller man. However, their wingspan is equal. Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, we are ready to go. And Luis Feliciano in the Red, white, and blue, the Boricua colors. Yes, a degree in criminology. Ready? Got it done. Box. We are underway. This was scheduled for six rounds as Policiano makes his pro debut. 
two-time ringside national champion. You can just name all the awards you won the PALS, the under-19, 2012 and 16 Olympic trials. He's 23 years old. His opponent, Angel Rodriguez, turned pro in 2006 back at La Villita Assembly Hall in San Antonio, Texas. Maybe a couple hundred people in attendance there. Here he is at the Blasco Theater two weeks after going against Jonathan Navarro. You're right, like that old school. You get off the mat. Here we go. Want to come back in two weeks? Why not? He said he was watching the commentary that Steve Kim had last week or two weeks ago. He agreed. You know, Steve said he meant get that WD-40 out after five years in activity. <laughs> that was a good one. He laughed about it. He, he, he loved the commentary. But after that first round, he felt real comfortable. They didn't need the WD-40. Went the distance with him. Yeah, he fought himself back into shape. From the first round to the sixth round, he got better and better and more confident and more fluid with his punches and even a little more aggressive. He wasn't just in there trying to survive. He was trying to win. And that's the right mentality to take into this fight. Now he's facing a guy who doesn't have any pro fights. But I look at Feliciano's body. He has the, the, the athletic frame of, uh, up. of a modern junior welterweight. Feliciano played baseball growing up. That was his first love. In high school, tried out for the baseball team, but really got into boxing, won a tournament. They really couldn't decide what to do. Went with the boxing route. Also played some basketball. Puerto Rican. Doug, guess who his favorite fighter is? Come on, you know this. Uh, Felix Trinidad. I don't know how you always get these, Doug. <laughs> it's like <laughs> I'm psychic. Like you're psychic. His favorite fighter, of course, Felix Trinidad. He said he wants to fight in Puerto Rico a couple of times. Goes back. And I say stop, stop. Let's go. As a kid, he would always go to Uswabo, Puerto Rico. That's where his family is from. His dream is to fight on the island. It's good that he has that connection. Um, and I think it's good that Golden Boy is not just signing local talent or talent from Texas of, of Mexican descent, but folks from the Midwest, folks from the East Coast, fo folks from the North and, uh, and, and of different ethnic backgrounds, national ethnic backgrounds like Puerto Rican, which of course that that uh, that culture has a great love for boxing. So if uh, young Feliciano wins his pro debut and progresses Ready? the way people Ready? believe he will, he will have a fan base. Mouthpiece out of the mouth of Angel Rodriguez. Final seconds of the opening round. He's scheduled for six. Feliciano and Rodriguez opening bout the Velasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. Now we got ten seconds to go. Cesar, me escuchas? Cesar, 10 para esquina roja, 9 para la Yeah, I'm using talk back. I don't know, the, the box is not working, plus we're getting a lot of noise. It's almost impossible to actually have the headset on. It's, it's way. Yeah, it's like interference coming in or something, I don't know. When you get to the inside, you got to go to work. Rip the uppercut because he's leaning forward on you. Yeah, I think it's clean now. No, I got it again. I got the noise again. You feel okay, though? Right? All right, go to work. You got to go to work. Second round of action underway. Luis Feliciano in there. Marquette University. How does the Boricua get to Milwaukee? You know, not exactly the hub of Puerto Ricans. His aunt left the island. A headbutt. His aunt left the island. She ended up in Milwaukee. She actually went to Chicago first, then Milwaukee. And everybody follows. You got the one there. Here we have jobs. Here we go. There's a clash of heads. Let me see. We haven't seen the cut. And there's yet. some blood, huh? He's leaning his head forward like there's something dripping. 
Ringside position, Dr. Paul Wallace. He's going to be going in his eye. Stop it. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Angel's saying, let's go. He's a tough dude. Yeah, he can feel it dripping. Yeah, and I, I see it now. It's in the upper uh, inside corner Play of his left eye. He's dabbing at it. And he's rubbing it. But he's going to have to get to work. Feliciano, he had a nice uh, measured, poised opening round. He was using his, his height and controlling the distance behind a nice jab and slipping punch as well. Let's see if he can continue to do so in round two. Get back, step. No, no, stop. Both of you. No punches behind the back of the head. Kai, he's senior. He's been around a while. He's seen a lot of great fights. Worked a lot of great fights. We give an eye between these two. And Angel Rodriguez. And Picocito. Was in there. What's his that name? That cut is opening up. As Feliciano targets it with his right hand. The more the blood that trickles, the more Rodriguez dabs with his left glove. Rodriguez, back in 2011, had a great fight with Jesse Roman. Ended up on the losing side of it. They lost to Miguel Wendia. That was in 2012. That's when he just stepped away from the sport of boxing for a few years. He stayed, stayed in the gym, but wasn't in it. Now, he said he missed it so much. Love being in there with Jonathan Navarro. He wants to come in here. Try to prove something against Luis Feliciano. But he tried looking for tape. Not much of him. It's an amateur, but you can't take him lightly. Good couple of right hands. On Feliciano started boxing at the age of seven. Told his dad he wanted a box. They found the local gym. Mom and dad and Cisco are in attendance at the Velasco. You know, one thing it sets Feliciano apart from uh, a lot of these amateur standouts who turn pro. Most of these guys are turning pro between the ages of 18 and 20. At uh, age 23, Feliciano, you can tell he's got his man strength. Not as easy to muscle around in there or bully in there if you're, if you're an older Chinese fighter than Rodriguez. Also, the discipline, Doug, just to graduate college with one thing. At the same time, trying to train for national, trying to compete in the Olympics. Some guys just say, you know what, I'm not going to work. But right. When you're, the hardest part about college is showing up. Absolutely. And it shows um, that Feliciano has a, a discipline and a maturity that's going to serve him well in the professional ranks of boxing. And we're seeing, you know, we saw his managerial uh, and, uh, stable mate earlier this evening, um, Martinez, Javier Martinez, get a little caught up in the pro debut. Uh, worked a little harder than he probably needed to. And we're seeing the, the, the older uh, pro debuter fighting a more mature fight. Cesar Diez para Esquina Roja, 20 a 18. Hola, hola, me escucha Leo por ahí? Muy mal. Angel, you can't be sitting on the outside, man. You gotta fucking get, I know, I know, but you gotta be getting in there. You gotta get in there. Okay? 10 para esquina roja. 20 a 18. On the outside and you got to get to the inside. You got to throw the body shot. All right? Looks good, actually. It's on the top See, of the head. See, this accident headbutt. Yeah, here it goes. Both guys were lunging forward. It was a hard clash of heads. Obviously, Rodriguez got the worst of it. Third round of action between Rodriguez, the Boricua, and Feliciano in red. Uh, Feliciano in blue, Rodriguez in red. He's the fighter out of Houston, Texas. And he is Texas tough. He is Texas determined. And I think his corner's done a, a decent job on that cut. It's not bleeding right now. So they're controlling the, the bleeding. That's what a cut man is supposed to do. It's great if your head trainer is also your cut man. Save that money. <laughs> yeah. You see, he's cagey. He, he, he blocks and parries punches. He'll try to swat the incoming punches. But he's also, um, he needs to counter. When he does that, he needs to get his punches off. His corner wants him to get inside where he can work the body. 
so far he hasn't been able to get past the jab and straight right hand of Feliciano. Feliciano saying when we Javier Martinez out of Dallas, Texas, a fourth round stoppage in his pro debut. Also out of Texas, Virgil Ortiz trained with Joel and Antonio Diaz in Coachella, Dallas, Texas. He's watching us right now on the Ring TV live stream. Virgil Ortiz worked at MMA fight last night, Doug, and some of the guys that work with Virgil in the uh, Indio Boys and Girls Club said, oh, you know Virgil Ortiz? That kid hits like a mule. So when guys from other disciplines are shouting <laughs> you out, they're like, yeah, watch out for him. Virgil Ortiz, hot young prospect for Golden Boy, 18 years old. He's watching us tonight. He'll be up fighting soon. That's on pretty cool. They have a reputation in boxing and MMA, yeah. even though you're just a boxer. <laughs> Feliciano, the Puerto Rican, started to box at the age of seven. Living in training in Big Bear now. With Ben Lira, Abel Sanchez, watching Triple G could do work up there. I'm seeing a, a very measured, economical boxer. He's pretty good at slipping punches. Kind of your, your, uh, your basic uh, stand-up one-two boxer. His, his primary weapons is, is his jab and his right hand, and nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with the basics. Oops, a little slip, slip there. Push. More blood. You see Rodriguez pawing at it. Yeah, but the eye held out until about 30 seconds left in this round. So corner controlling it thus far. Feliciano. Maybe he needs to get to work on it. Drop some more right hands as he did in the second round. Feliciano looking poison there. No, he's, he has six rounds. Yeah, he's not in a rush. And knowing that he's going up against a dude who's a veteran, who's been matched up well, and has seen the thing or two in his day, who's also 35 years old. from Feliciano, he punctuates it with a, a right to the body as he backs the veteran up. A nice one-two hook combination as he backs up Rodriguez. Fourth round of action. Watching Luis Feliciano in his pro debut, the 23-year-old Marquette University alum. Reasoning with Marquette, and he went to college. One, he's the first one in his family to graduate from college, but he was on scholarship also. Yeah, they have a boxing program at Marquette yeah. University. That he was at times thought about, what am I doing? Maybe this isn't what I want to do, but you couldn't pass an opportunity to go to school if somebody else is paying for it. I take advantage of it. You know, something's always going to be with him. Terminology degree, one of the reasons you signed with Golden Boy, Doug, you're alluding to it, how Golden Boy is signing fighters all over the country, but with the new ESPN deal, Golden Boy will be traveling all over the U.S. and will be in different markets. Feliciano said he wants to be able to be a fighter known in the Midwest, also the East Coast, where Team No Excuses at, out in Washington, D.C., with Demetrius Ballard, Lamont Roach, Kevin Rivers, Philadelphia, that Demon Allen. Texas, you have Panahara in San Antonio, Joshua Franco, obviously there's Robert Garcia in Riverside, but ability to have these kids go back to their hometown to build their fan bases, and that was something that was very big for him. This is my first time seeing Feliciano fight live, and I, I, I get the impression that he is a, a very serious competitor. I'm watching him between rounds, listening to instructions from Ben Vera, there is a laser-like focus. He is looking Ben in the eyes, and he is listening to everything. He is internalizing it, and he comes out and he executes. And we're seeing here in round four, he's stepping up his aggression and activity. He knows when to do it. 
I, I think if he would have kept the same pace in round four that he did in rounds one, two, and three, I might have criticized him a little bit and said, hey, okay, step on the gas a little bit, man. You're in control of this fight. Don't forget, boxing is a sport. It's also the entertainment business. You want people to uh, come away excited and wanting to see you fight again. But so far, so good. He knows what he's doing in there. And I like the, 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 the defensive side of this game. Feliciano going after that cut that was suffered as a result of the headbutt in the second round. It's still, you know, obviously this is his pro debut. It's early to try to define uh, a fighter's ring identity or yeah. style, but just based off four professional rounds, I I'm, I'm seeing um, a technician. Um, somebody who's not going to get over with sheer athleticism or natural talent. He doesn't have the fastest hands, doesn't have great power, but technically speaking, he's sound. He's solid all around. He's got Guys, sound fundamentals. Guys, I'm still having audio issues. That's what my talkback is hey. not working, I think. 10 for Esquina Roja. Todos han sido para Esquina Roja. Hard. Although he's calling it, he says he can see fine. 40 to 36. Sabor, Esquina Roja. Hi Angel, you're okay? All right. Angel Rodriguez, five years away. He's like a little cut. Had him stop. Yeah, he, he answered the referee, Raul Caiz Jr. He, said, he, he didn't say, hey, I, I can see okay. He just said, don't stop. Si, señor, mucho. Gracias, compadre. Creo que ya ellos ya están bien. Fifth round, scheduled for six. Between Luis Feliciano, Golden Boy bringing him along quick, though. You know, usually guys make their pro debut, you give them the four rounds, and you give them somebody that isn't going to be much resistance. Now nah, they have plans for Feliciano to move along quickly. Angel Rodriguez is not an easy out for anybody. Bald head. Thanks to everybody watching us around the world. Como siempre, saludos a Don Jose Vitela. El muchacho de rojo, no es cholo, no es pelón. Rodriguez, here in round five, is fighting with a little more urgency. He's taking some risks, and he's landed some body shots. Being, he's he's uh, not waiting on Feliciano, and I think that's smart. He might as well throw caution to the wind. Particularly when Feliciano is working his defense and just moving his head without moving his hands, that's an opportunity for Rodriguez to, to, to get off. And the more punches Rodriguez throws in combination, the better for him. You're not going to catch Feliciano with one or two shots. Nope, you're not. Feliciano has decent head movement. Nice. R Rodriguez has had his moments so far in round five. Also down in San Diego, Daniel KB619. Appreciate you watching. He also has a scorecard going on his own. Been watching since the first fight tonight when Joe Gonzalez had a first round KO. No, 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 that was okay. Nice little step around you see from Feliciano. He's got good footwork. Like I said, there's nothing really eye catching about his athleticism. He, he doesn't have flashy speed. Um, he's not somebody who's throwing punches all the time, you know, trying to throw every punch in every round and, and, and eye-catching combinations. He's very careful. He's economical. He is what I would call a technician. Wearing those Grant gloves. Here's Feliciano. And one thing he also knows about Feliciano, his style is adapting well to the pro game. Cause if you're in the amateurs, they go four, three rounds. So it doesn't look like condition is a factor well, when you're running in Big Bear with Triple G. Obviously, condition is not going to be a factor for you at all. Yeah, it better not be. Yeah, you're going to enter your pro debut with a lot of confidence, at least conditioning-wise. And there's a lot more to this young man than conditioning. He's smart. He doesn't let his hands fall unless he knows those punches are going to land.
and he knows when to let him go. Economical pick in with spots. And he's, he's had some professional resistance from Angel Rodriguez in, in this fifth round. Rodriguez has landed some shots. It's been a competitive round. Don't let the body of Rodriguez fool you. This dude is tough as nails. Aguanta from the touch of the Houston, Texas. Two was was a, a jab right, and then it was sort of a semi hook cross. He's trying to get in and around that high guard of Rodriguez. Sixth and final round, Luis Feliciano in the blue. Angel and Picosito, Rodriguez in red. See if Rodriguez empties the gas tank and just goes for it the sixth and final round. Actually, the nickname is Picudo. That's the nickname for him out of Houston, Texas. What does that mean? The like the one that just bouncing around, like the, the kind of up to no good kind of thing. Yeah, I can see him being that way in his youth. Yeah, he's probably mellowed out a little bit. But, uh, I bet he was bouncing around. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, like, yeah. it's that like. That up to no good kind yeah. of kid, like travieso. Right, the rascal. The yeah, rascal. the rascal. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that. With a little smile, a little smirk. And he's in there with the schoolboy, Luis Feliciano. And we've seen a lot of facets to Feliciano's game because Feliciano was matched this solid in his pro debut. We've seen his accuracy, we've seen his poise, we've seen his, uh, his movement, his defense. And for the most part, he's controlled his uh, more experienced opponent. So he's been able to fight at a comfortable pace. So we really haven't seen his, his conditioning tested yet. We haven't really seen his metal tested yet because he hasn't allowed yeah. Rodriguez to get in there and rough him up. Rodriguez is going to... Make sure you don't look good in your fight. Yeah. It's hard to shine against Rodriguez because he's tough, but he's also cagey. And you're going to learn something from this. You're going to go back and watch the video. Like, okay, I can see what I could do. And as you and Steve have taught me, you learn more out of a fight like this than you do a first round 30 second knockout. You don't learn anything from a showcase fight. You know? And if you're, if you're young and impressionable, those showcase fights make you think you're better than you are. They make you think you're faster than you are. Nah, that you're more Doug. powerful than you are. Come on now. So these, like some guys so are going to bleed their own hype. Oh, yeah. They're there's boxing. A lot, there's a lot, of, a lot of kids like that out there, particularly nah. in the social media age. They let everyone know that they're deluded. Hey, these so Instagram boxers are legit. <laughs> so it's good when you're in with the tough cookie. There it is. Like Angel Rodriguez. It keeps you grounded. He likes oh, mixing nice. it up with you. There you go. Good nice. action picking it up. Both of these fighters enjoying themselves here at the sixth and final round. I see blood underneath the left ear of Feliciano. It may not be his blood, it might be Rodriguez's blood. And that'll do it. Luis Feliciano's been a long time coming, waiting for his pro debut. Olympic dreams didn't happen, but a professional fight with Golden Boy did. He goes the distance against Angel Rodriguez. Six good rounds. I think there's a lot of promise there for him as a professional. He's got very good fundamentals, and obviously he's got a good head on his shoulders. 
obviously check him out. He's got a good team around him. Yeah. You can't go wrong with Abel Sanchez. That and team Pimpera. does not come cheap. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You saw the, the right cross get through to the, the left ear of Rodriguez, uh, an uppercut, split that high guard of the veteran fighter. And a nice hard jab. He's trying to follow up with right crosses as he moves his head to avoid the fire back from Rodriguez. And Rodriguez landed some punches there. That was a nice little left hook. Some machismo, a little bit of showmanship to, to close out the six rounder. Right cross, left foot combination to end the fight. Yeah, if I could be the one that's going to get you the big headlines, but a fight like that later on in your career as you progress in your fourth, fifth fight, like, okay, when Angel Rodriguez was doing this, I was able to do this, and you learn him. It was a workmanlike performance from uh, Luis Feliciano, and I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Y saludos a todos los que están mirando en México, también en Guatemala, and watching us all over the world. Alicia de Durango, saludos, que si los conozco. Linus, of course, in Philadelphia, who's all about this, looking forward to him. Keep those tweets coming. Doug's mailbag every Friday and Monday. I didn't get a chance to read today's, Doug, because I was too busy trying to stay dry from all this rain. Oh, it's a fun one. We're, you know, Feliciano was a college grad. Somebody asked me about college grads in boxing, so I named just as many as I could off the top of my head. And with any list, of course, I left guys out. So Wait, apologies college? to Chris Algieri. I left you off the, the list. I know you've got, like, three college degrees. <laughs> so, I mean, my apologies to the... Uh, the okay, avocado eating assassin. Let me see what I got. I got uh, Juan Diaz, the baby bull. Yep, he was. I, I, I included him. Uh, and I'm done. Yeah, the Klitschko brothers, they have PhDs. They were the top of the list right there. Oh, well, I mean, PhDs in Russia, <laughs> <laughs> Ukraine, man. Come on. Just like in Mexico, you, you talk to some of these guys like, yeah. oh, si, soy licenciado. I'm a lawyer. I'm right. A, I'm there, like, wait a minute. Everybody's a, they have the title licenciado. You're not a real lawyer. I want to see you pass the bar. Yeah, yeah Juan, the Klitschkos, the Juan Diaz. Uh, and Doug Fisher with a, a master's degree. Don't let the, don't let Doug fool you. Man. He's got a master's from Columbia. Schoolboy Fisher. Uh huh. That would be a good name right there. You see the judges getting stuff together. Yeah, but a lot of excitement in boxing right now. We've got a good schedule, so fans are excited about these upcoming fights. We're excited about Canelo Chavez. Even if they diss it, they go on and, and, and analyze it for 500 words, so I know they're into it. Oh, the um, best is uh, the people <laughs> complaining about uh, There is going to be a pre-sale on Saturday. Go to the Golden Boy social media pages. They'll let you know for Canelo Chavez tickets. But all the people who are already complaining about how expensive that fight's going to be, but they haven't released the prices. Yeah. But you know the people complaining are the people who oh, have no yeah. intention of even going <laughs> and buying <laughs> tickets. I'm, as I'm learning working with you and Steve, people are going to complain well, just to complain. Sure, and they're not? professional complainers. It's their right as a fan. And all emails for Nutcase yeah. fan, yes. And send your emails to Dougie at BoxingMailbag.com. Yeah, and if you have complaints about me, send it to Dougie at BoxingMailbag. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, send it to K9 Kim. He still uses Yahoo. And now, John Martinez. Let's go to the judges' scorecards. Ray Corona and Chris Rosario are in the same way. 60 and 50. Ray Corona and Chris Rosario are in the same way. 60 and 50. Ray Corona and Chris Rosario are in the same way. 60 and 50. Corona and Rosario have it scored 60 to 54. Jerry Cantu anotó 59, 55. Cantu has it 59, 55. All for your winner by unanimous decision in su debut profesional, Luis Feliciano. There he is. Luis Feliciano, congratulations to the fighter out of Milwaukee, Sangre de Boricua, as Steve Kim will say, Wepa. Congratulations to him, Marquette. Actually, he has his own video crew following him around. They've been following him around the last couple of years in his journey trying to get to the Olympics. Here he is with Golden Boy Promotions. Six solid rounds. Good work for him tonight. I think he is well on his way, as we see highlights from this fight once again. There was the accidental clash of heads. Looked like it would uh, maybe prematurely end this fight. Thankfully, it didn't. Rodriguez handled the, the cut as he did his corner. And kudos to Dr. Paul Wallace for allowing him to, to fight through the adversity. You see some good work from Feliciano working the body with both hands. Working straight shots down the middle. That's a nice lead right hand. He's got good timing. 
does Feliciano. And the combination there. As the fight progressed, Feliciano let his hands go more. That was a beautiful lead right, right uppercut combination. You see him bite down on his mouthpiece. Yep. Grid his face up a little bit to settle down and, 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 and put, put some mustard behind those shots. Eh, saludos a todos los que están mirando la familia de Luis Feliciano en Utuado, Puerto Rico. Cue the Mark Anthony. Get going. Ahí mi querido San Juan. Coming up next, El Conde, Genaro Gámez against Alejandro Ochoa. Beth Duran, Doug Fisher, no Steve Kim tonight. Led by Will Wright, Executive Vice President of Golden Boy Media and Entertainment, David Tetro, also in the studio. Luis, Luis, I wish I knew your last name right now, but he's a stud from Hawthorne Cable. <laughs> Luis Gonzalez with the Z, my man who helped out in Hawthorne Cable. Ted Spears in there. And I don't know who else is in the mix, but we got the crack staff going. Sean Hendricks, producer Sean. We got everybody. You know, you bring the A squad on a Friday night. When it's raining, you got to make sure that you bring people to make sure that the power doesn't go out. And Hinata Gomez, what he's done in his young career, he's knocked out the lights quickly. Now he's all about power. I, I, what does his nickname mean? El, what is, El Conde. Yeah, what is El Conde? So that's a self-named uh, nickname. Um, the way his dad explained it is that when he was younger, they were taking him to, him to spar, and he was just schooling people. Yeah. But in, in Spanish, it's a word called condenado, right? Where it's like you're the one out there dealing it, dishing it. And he was basically condemning people. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, it's about to condemn this poor guy. That's exactly you, you what saved him. You saved this young oh, man from the it? electric chair. Oh, yeah. He watch was, out. This guy almost. Uh, Look at this. Quick reflex. Yeah, it Boom, was almost, it was almost a Bernard there Hopkins you situation, but uh -huh, yeah. you have reflexes. Oh, you got yeah. That, uh, you're, you're more athletic than a lot of these uh, Can't mess up my ringside makeup. Cannot cameramen. mess up my makeup here <laughs> ringside. <laughs> but, yeah, that was that was a scary moment. It was. Oh, absolutely. He, threw, he hit the kid right through it. Uh, that was Gomez, who was 3-0. That was Vernon Alston, yes, it was. who had a record of 8-6-1, the kind of um, opponent who normally gets out of the first round, uh, the kind of opponent particularly who, against somebody yeah. who only had two pro fights. But uh, Gomez has a way of cutting that ring off, making that ring small on his opponents, and he, he throws with a, a lot of leverage and a lot of confidence. So if he didn't have that nickname of uh, El, El Conde, I would call him Mr. Excitement. Yeah, three first round KOs. And then our main event, Tito Manzanares out of Los Mochis, Sinaloa, born in Phoenix, bilingual uh, kid. Golden Boy, really excited about bringing him to the United States first. As a typical Mexican, he turned pro at 16. He's 33 and 1 at a very young age of 23. I, I heard about him when he was uh, maybe 17 years old. He wasn't old enough to, to box in the U.S. at that point, and he was yep. undefeated. I think he was 20 and 0 or 21 and 0, one of the hot prospects out of boxing. And then he lost to a grizzled veteran, yep. like one of these guys who fights everybody, a, a, a difficult, tricky southpaw. Who I think stopped him, and then um, I didn't hear about him. And little did I know that he was he got back to his winning ways and avenged that loss. Scored a, a knockout against the, the, the journeyman, Barrera, I believe. Yep. Alejandro Barrera beat him in 2012. He stopped him in the sixth. Then he avenged that with a third round KO. And here we're Two seeing highlights later. of Gammy Diaz. Bears a striking resemblance to actor David Duchovny. That's who he was. Yeah, he, okay. doesn't he look like David Duchovny? Man. Right out of the X-Files, man. I and looked at him I'm like, okay, this guy <laughs> looks like somebody. And Duchovny is a, is a fight fan. And, uh, oh, is you he? Know, if, if, yeah, oh yeah. He, he trains a little bit. He, he, he knows his way around the ring. And if he's ever seen Diaz fight, I bet you he likes Diaz because Diaz comes to scrap. But he's a savvy veteran. Like I said, don't let those 15 losses fool you because he's been in with the best of the best. He's those Most of those losses are to, to uh, title holders, guys who held titles in multiple divisions, guys like Jorge Linares. Guys like uh, Robert Guerrero, who he beat in their first encounter. And he won the world title from a hot uh, Japanese up-and-comer named uh, Takahiro Ao. And uh, then he lost the WBC junior lightweight title to Takashi Miura, who we know about now because Miura's yep. come stateside and been in fight of the year uh, bouts or fight of the year candidates like his last fight uh, against Mickey Roman. 
So when Diaz has lost, he hasn't lost at Chumps. And when you look at Manzanares' record, he hasn't been in with anybody like yeah. that. He hasn't been in with a former world champion. He's been in with some, some hard-nosed veteran fighters, but he's never been in there with anybody um, who has been world class. So he's gonna be t uh, tested tonight in an eight round bout. And what I like about Diaz coming into this fight is that he's been active. He fought three times last year. Manzanares only fought once. What are we looking at here? Is this the Santa, Santa Monica, Monica Pier? Pier. Oh, yeah. Santa Monica Pier. I can't you know, imagine anybody's out there tonight. You know there's always <laughs> somebody <laughs> out there. <laughs> it, yeah. Even in rain again? Yeah, it, exactly. There's uh, the biggest storm of the year is hitting Los Angeles. Is the drought officially over? Man. Can I take long showers again? <laughs> First of all. This is a lot of water, man. Doug, have you seen some of these golf courses around here? The ones that David Tatro plays, those golf courses are always green. If the courses are green, we can play, we can take the shower as long as you want. You can take a bath, baby. You do whatever you want. And we're talking about these um, former amateur standouts being matched tough in their pro debut. I think Gomez is being matched in his fourth professional fight against Alejandro Ochoa. Ochoa is the type of guy normally he fights unbeaten prospects who have 10, 11, and 12 bouts, not guys who are 3-0. and well, Gomez and his team, he's trained by his father, correct? Yes, his father is his trainer. They do not lack for confidence. No, they don't. His dad fought a few fights as a professional, has a couple of the younger fighters, but uh, his dad... In Gomez, they have their own. They, they don't have their own gym, but they have their own workout area uh, down in San Diego. So I'm imagining for his his really good sparring, he's got to come. Well, he got to come up uh, our yeah, way. What he does is he's managed by Robert Garcia, who will also be in his corner. Uh, Luis Gomez is the dad, is the trainer, but Robert Garcia, it's you know in the corner also. Robert Garcia is the manager, so twice a week they drive up from San Diego to the Robert Garcia Boxing Academy, Riverside Edition, and that's where he gets some work. And Gomez um, has sparred with Evgeny Grotovich before. He's also gotten oh, work yeah. with the artist Michael Perez. Oh yeah, Puerto I, I've Rico. heard some guys have called me up. Uh, Billy Dib, a former featherweight champ, who's got like, I don't know, 46, 47 pro bouts. He called me up after Gomez's last fight and told me that Gomez is a beast. And he had to basically box to all of his ability to hang with this kid and, and Dib is normally the kind of guy the kind of stylist that that takes young guys to school they can't touch him and the problem with God with Gomez to be completely honest with you his last fight was scheduled at the Fancy Springs Resort and Casino a few months ago he missed weight by over five pounds so bad that they didn't even try to get on the scales the fight was called off for Gomez well not because he doesn't work hard is they're still trying to figure out how to get the discipline right with the weight. This fight at 138, they they see his future as 135. Yeah, and he's because he's so stout. young, he's pretty. He's kind of short for a junior welterweight. He's five six, and there's hope that if he gets completely disciplined, get him down to 130. Because with the power that he has and the size that he's at, then he'll be able to do some damage at 130. Y ahora la fiesta de esta próxima pelea está pactada por César Santos en el peso super ligero. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, our co-main event tonight. Six rounds, this in the super lightweight division. Los tres jueces por ese combate, the three judges scoring once again at ringside. Rudy Barragan, Jerry Cantu, and Ray Corona. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action encargado de ring, el referee Zach Young. Presentar primero en la esquina azul con los pantaloncillos morrado con dorado y un peso de 137 libras y medias. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing purple trimmed in gold. He weighed in officially 137 and one half pounds. Un 20 rano de 21 peleas, his professional record, seven victories. 12 defeats, two draws, and one win coming by way of knockout from Bell Gardens, California. Here is Alejandro. Joy! 
y sobre de la esquina roja con los pantaloncillos rojo con negro y un peso de 138 libras. His opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. Where's tonight red trimmed in black and he weighed in officially 138 pounds. Con un record de tres victorias, todas por knockout, he is undefeated in three bouts with three victories all coming by way of knockout from San Diego, California. Here is the undefeated Genaro El Conde Gómez. Okay, Genaro, Alex, you already had the instructions, so you know what's expected. Trunks are okay, so keep me out of the fight, and good luck to both of you. Zach Young, third man in the ring tonight as we get ready for Gomez and Ochoa. Yeah, Gomez at ready age 21 is seven years younger. Ochoa has a slight reach advantage and their wingspan is equal. Ready, Downtown, Alex? Downtown Los ready Angeles. This one is scheduled for six rounds. Genaro Gomez, El Conde, Genaro Humberto Gomez is his full name. Dad was a pro, nicknamed El Gallito, with the Southwest High in San Diego County. His dad also has four amateurs that he trains. Gan Gomez, Doug, as I touch of the word, you know this, Travieso, like Travieso Arce, the little rascal, that's who he was as a little kid. Now nicknamed El Conde, because he's condemned his sparring opponents. Has a lot of power behind him was actually discovered by Robert Garcia's son, Pita, who goes in all over the amateur scene, and Robert Garcia now has a management company, and he has Hector Tanahata, Franco, uh, Jonathan Navarro, who we saw a couple weeks ago, and Pita saw this kid, Gomez, at a tournament, and said, Dad, you gotta look at this kid. Robert went down to San Diego, met him, he said, the day I met him, I knew I wanted to sign him, because it was something about him that I knew I wanted this kid on my team. They signed and they agreed that the dad would train him, Robert would manage and advise, and he comes to Riverside twice a week for sparring. Yeah, there's, there is something that stands out about him. I said, he does not lack the confidence. But when he talks, there's like a fire in his yeah. eyes. And he's also one of these guys, as an amateur, he fought just like this, but oh, just dude. like a professional, yeah. You knew who Gomez was, even you know, even with the headgear, he stood out from the other amateur standouts because he wasn't wasting punches, and all of his punches were hard. And you could tell, as an amateur, he was going for the knockout. He goes for the knockout every single chance he can as a pro. Three and zero, three KOs, all first round knockouts. He's gonna, have to, be, you know, he's gonna have to be careful with Ochoa, who's crafty, who's experienced, and also one of those guys you cannot judge him by his record. You can't look at those 12 losses and say, oh, this guy is a professional opponent. Now, yeah, he is a journeyman, but when you look at his record, you see this guy has fought 13 unbeaten fighters. Yeah, he's been competitive with these guys. He was in there, got knocked out by Chimpa Gonzalez, bad. Ivan Delgado also went with him, but this is the fighter with We saw him beat Kevin Rivers at the Stub Hub a year ago. And Kevin Rivers was an amateur standout. I believe Kevin Rivers was Undefeated 12 and 0. Yeah. Yeah. Chipa Gonzalez was 11 or 12 and 0. Ivan Delgado was unbeaten in 10 pro fights. So it says a lot that Gomez's team would take on this guy in just his fourth professional bout. Final seconds of the open round. First time that he's scheduled for six is Gomez. It looks like it's gonna be the first time he goes to the second round in his young career.
Second round of action. Gomez in the red and black. Saludos a Bebo Chavez y su clica watching your nephew, Genaro Gomez. Also, Gomez, four brothers. Fighting family. See if he picks up the pace here. That was kind of slow for Gomez in the first yeah, round. Yeah, I could be wrong, Beto, but I think he purposely paced himself slow, like he and wanted. low blow. Yeah, that was a little bit below the, the belt line. Evaluation. So Ochoa will get Evaluation. up to five minutes to you got time. And Ochoa isn't a guy who like, okay? oh, it's on my belt line, let me take a knee. That's not his style. No, Gomez has heavy hands. If he hits you in the cuff, you're going to feel it. We're gonna let me know when you're ready. See it. Yeah, there it was. It was a left. Ochoa was born in Michoacan. Ah. I think that's where that punch landed. Yeah. <laughs> Way south of the border. I've never okay. seen a fighter okay. take the full minute. Ready? There's this pressure. There's the pride in the line. Get that, man. And You're seeing stars? Yeah, to, to them, this feels like two minutes. When in, in reality, it was like 20 seconds. Yeah, there's tears in your eyes. Your stomach feels a little woozy. Take your time, bro. But yeah, that's, there's a reason they're fighters, and I'm not. Gomez with the white gloves, bouncing around. More move from here in the second round. Yeah, this is usually how he fights the yeah. opening round. He's looking to close distance and, and get in these power shots to the body and the head. But I think he wanted to see the second round of this fight. Big slam for Gomez, heavy hands. This is what people are excited about. Gomez could be clipped on his way inside. That's the best chance to hit him is when he's opening up offensively as he steps forward. Ochoa, 28 years old, can take a punch. He's not much of a puncher, no. Ochoa, but he's, he's awkward. And that uppercut hurt. That right tag. Dom is moving around. Quick hook. Oh! Right by Ochoa. That was a good overhand right landed yep. by the journeyman. Doesn't have the heaviest of hands, but he does land one and collect it solid. And that one was the first time in his career that Gomez has been hit that hard. We've done all of his fights. That might be the first time he's actually been hit in the face. And look, he's you see some punches. You know, he's not punching right now either. He, um, I think Ochoa earned some respect with that overhand right, and he needed to. Yeah, Ochoa's not going to back down from you. This is a, he's a journeyman, 7, 12, and 1, but the dude isn't scared of anybody. Yeah, no, look, look who he's fought. He's not going to be intimidated by a guy who's 3 and 0 with you know, all three fights ending in the first round. Also a guy in Gomez who was struggling to make the weight yesterday at the win. The commission is talking. Gomez was still in the bathroom trying to sweat up the last ounce. Got on the scale. Doug, other fights we've seen, he's being ripped and chiseled. Today, he doesn't look like he is. Yeah, it looks like he rehydrated a little bit too much. He was struggling to get 138. And their hopes of, if he can do everything right, if he can get to that 130, there's talk that he might even be in Las Vegas in May. But first, he has to get through Alex Ochoa. And Ochoa is no joke. He has good timing, and he's kind of awkward. So yeah. I think it's kind of hard for some of these young guys who haven't seen a lot of awkward boxers prepare for his punches. Sometimes he blindsides them, as he did with that overhand right. Jimmy D. Marino, three-piece boxer, and it looks like Gomez has kind of a sneaky left. What do you think, Doug? You know, I don't, I don't look at Gomez as a, as a sneaky fighter. Um, I think he has deceptive hand speed. 
I think he's economical with his shots. I don't think he's going to let that hand go, the, the left or the right, unless he knows it's going to land. But I, I, you know, I view him as a straightforward, aggressive boxer puncher. Interesting division between the 130s and 135s. One of the man's is trying to make some noise. WBC youth champion now out of DC, Lamont Roach Jr. watching us on Ring TV Live. Hello to Lamont Roach Jr. and happy birthday to his senior. No excuse boxes in the district. Smart of Ochoa to go to Gomez's body. The fighters have had to lose a lot of weight, and then maybe they put on too much water weight from the weigh-in to, to the ring. They're susceptible to shots to the body. That, that weight loss and weight gain weakens them to the body already. Yeah, Gomez has fought at 32, 32, 34. Tonight, 138. Yeah, it seems to me that the, the low 130s is more natural for him. Maybe 130 is a stretch, but it seems to me that he should be able, at age 21 particularly, in his, age, in his build, he should be able to make 135. So obviously he's got to he's got to figure out his diet, what he can get away with and what he can't. And I think, ooh, he's a nice, uh, yeah. another one of those those sneaky rights. So if you ask me who the sneaky fighter is in this, it's the journeyman. It's, it's Ochoa, and he's sneaky because he's able to land these punches that aren't really technically clean and they're not very fast. But he's letting them go at the right time, and they're, they're just awkward enough to where they land. Maybe because Gomez thinks they're not going to land. Also, don't do that. The don't do that. You understand? You okay? Five, ten. Let's go, bye. Chipa Gonzalez, 5'9", 5'10". Yeah, he's 5'10". Like, he's, he's growing. Gomez at 5'6". Interesting the way bodies are shaped. I'm pretty sure when Gomez was, you know, 18 and 19 years old, he could eat whatever he wanted to eat, and he would just work it off in the gym, but maybe the metabolism slows down a little bit, or maybe he's eating a little bit too much. You just got to figure that out. He also has that thicker body. Yes, he does. Him. Probably has pretty big thighs as well. See the way he fills out. Third round of action. Gomez and Alex Ochoa. I like seeing Gomez go some rounds for a change. Huh? Not always going to be easy for you. First time in his career that Hinato Gomez gets rounds and he goes to the fourth against Alejandro Ochoa, Alex Ochoa, Bell Gardens, California. 7 12 2. Doesn't have much power, only one KO in his wins, but he's there with you. This is a professional resistance, going to teach you a couple of things. Yeah, he's usually durable. He's awkward, he's cagey, he's tricky in there. So he gives young prospects. Uh, a lot to work with. Chief Gonzalez being the, the exception. Gonzalez, about in a second. Yeah, caught him. From what I understand, Ochoa had some personal issues going into that. Oh, I may not have been as focused as he normally is. But he looks focused and confident here. And we're seeing some of the shine come off of Gomez. I didn't see a jab from Gomez in round three. Seeing a little bit of it here in round four. See a lot of those hooks from him. Man. That's yeah. But not much of a jab to set you up. <laughs> I want to 
to see the combinations from Gomez when he's in close. Quick ones to the body and the head. Ochoa went to his body a little bit in the previous round. I'd like to see Gomez pay him back. And we just saw him on a nice left hook. Another one. Yeah, right to the midsection. Those, those lefts were above the belt line. El Conde, not really condemning anybody in this fight, as Ochoa's hanging with him. A lot of people were thinking, okay, this would be one, another one where Gomez is gonna come and blow you out right away. And considering the track record that Ochoa's had in the last couple fights, this is a, a, a fighter Ochoa who's gaining some confidence. He's eating some big punches, but he's not backing away from them either. Gomez in the red and blacks. Well, his pace is also slowed down. He came out strong in the second. <laughs> like that sprint workout you do, Doug. Now he's thinking. Yep. You know what? I can I can see Gomez is thinking. Like, how do I get in on this guy? I think he's not good. His stance you, right? is strange. He, he moves a little bit, then he stands his ground, and then his punches are coming at weird angles. Not at times that I'm, I'm, I'm used to. And, and don't forget, he's got his father in his corner, and he's also got Robert Garcia, yep. you know, a trainer of the year, uh, award winner, many years. He's probably listening to both of these guys and wondering, okay, what, what do I do? <laughs> what do I listen to? And also, he's loading up on his punches, but Ochoa takes him. There's Spanish, Aguanta. That's a rugged dude right there. Wow, swing and a miss. We go to the fifth. some punches, gets his head in there, gets Gomez's chest, Gomez stiffens him with the right uppercut, snaps the head back, gets at an angle and tries to get off with some left hooks. That was a frustrating round for Gomez, I think. And you hear Ochoa's corner right when you cut to him, that he's slowing down a bit. Ochoa's been here. He's gone to 10 rounds in the past with his opponents. Uncharted territory for Gerano El Conde Gámez. Fifth round. All of his fights previously all ended in the first round with a KO. He's got to work today. He's got to earn his paycheck. And Marco Palau is going to cover him. Got to earn that per diem, right, Dougie? <laughs> You gotta earn your buzz if you're a prospect. And he had a nice buzz going with those highlight reel knockouts, particularly in his last fight. But tonight, he's being forced to go rounds, and he's not in there with someone who's gonna stand right in front of him, and he's not in there with somebody who's intimidated by him. Well, that's also something that you and Steve always harp on, where you can look great a first round knockout, but you're not gonna learn anything. These are the kind of fights that are gonna help you later on in your career. And who knows, maybe those first round knockouts foster bad habits in a young fighter. I'm not saying that because I don't know, but yeah. sometimes that happens. I've seen it happen to other fighters. You've seen guys who are 8-0, they get they get beat. Nick Arce, for example, get, loses after 8-0 in the next couple fights, and we haven't heard from him after that. He was a kid who came up with knockouts. Right, and, and had uh, had a pretty strong fan following as well. And Salcedo Brothers said he hasn't even gone back to Westside Boxing. Well, you can build that up, and then you know, it gets tough for you, some of these guys will. Not that Gomez is one of those, but as the competition steps up. Yeah, at some point, you're gonna be in there with somebody who's not only not intimidated by you, but they're actually gonna try to win. Yeah. <laughs> and the prospect who stays diligent in his training and dedicated to his craft, those are the guys that are gonna overcome that adversity. And if you been believing your hype or, or thinking like, nah, no matter who I hit, I'm gonna take him out, so maybe I don't have to train that hard yeah. because there's no way my fight's gonna go the distance. You're gonna be in trouble when somebody stands up to you. There are some people who let you know how great they are in sparring, and it's sparring for a reason. Right, that's sparring. 
Yeah, it's a the real deal. Yeah, there's no headgear. It's the smaller glove. This, this counts. Doug, this goes on your record. Doug and Bethel ain't at the gym when you're sparring, bro. <laughs> Step it up. You got to impress us. <laughs> Don't be demanding extra rooms and flights <laughs> for everybody when you talk to Carla. You get what's in your contract. Push down. Zach Young right on top of it. If you want to stay a fan of the big hotel, head. you got to step right. it up. You're the main event guy. you got to be impressive if you want Will Wright to bring the drone out for you. <laughs> Nice. That, there's there's a sneaky left that uh, that's the one the social media fan was talking about. That was an uppercut from from Gomez. But I can tell the steam. Clash of heads. Yeah, it was clash an accidental clash of heads. Both guys reacted to it. I don't accidental headbutt. Yet. Accidental headbutt. Ochoa has been hit no, below the belt. No, clash cut. of heads. A typical Time. Alex Ochoa fight. Yes. That's gonna no happen with here. his awkward style. Yeah. Boom. Oh, he's got a yeah. small cut he's here. He's to blame for that. Really. Yeah. Yeah. Ready? I, I think there was some a little bit of blood left eye of Gomez. Also, maybe it was a cornrow hurt. Accidental headbutt on the cut. Accidental headbutt. Left eye, right here, eyebrow. Hey, that cut was accidental headbutt. Well, how are you? You okay? Okay, you want me to have a doctor check up? Yes. There's a right hand to the ear. I'm gonna have you check Landed by Gomez. At the end of the round, I think Gomez he says he is checked by the doctor because he is complaining about a headache after this accident of flash of heads. As soon as, as they are Show seconds, coming as as in with the right the hand, starts, swinging his entire upper here. body. Oh, his here, forehead here. hit on the left side of Gomez's face, caused, uh, I think, a small cut to Gomez. Second out, I'll be sick. Doctor's gonna come check him out immediately. See Zach Young holding off Gomez. Stop! Time! Get over here. Call time. Ochoa said he was dizzy. The doctor's gonna look him in the eye, see what his uh, pupils look like. You okay? You sure? You okay? You okay? You okay? All right. Both watch your heads, all right? Time in, box, last round, wait, come in. Yeah, Zach, there you go. sixth and final round, remind them. <laughs> last round, guys. Naragam is black and red. Alex Ochoa in the blue and gold. I've seen the zip and steam leave Gomez's punches in rounds four and five. Let's see if he tries to finish with the flourish in round six. Right hand by Gomez. Another solid right by Gomez. Ochoa is known around Southern California. He's the guy you can call up for some sparring. Bounces around from gyms in LA and Orange County. Doesn't exactly have a solid base. Uh, nice just, tag there yeah, by Matt. Good right. I think that was a cross hook combination that sent Ochoa momentarily reeling. Ochoa trying to figure out if he's going to go southpaw or orthodox. He goes neither. He gets into the corner. He still has his wits about him. He's blocking some of these shots. He, keep, he keeps that hand in at the very end just to deflect just enough. Time is going for the body for the first time in the fight. He's a headhunter, isn't he? Yeah, I, I, I needed to see more body work from Gomez, but I like what I'm seeing from him. He is yeah. pressing. He's trying to finish strong. You always want to see that from the young up and coming. And it's tough. He's, he's got a, a tricky guy in front of him. He's got a kind of guy who's just going to disrupt your timing and your rhythm. A nice uh, right uppercut from Gomez on the inside. Good learning experience. Learning that you can't just steamroll everybody. You can't just impose your will. So some of these guys are going to fight back. I think Gomez will learn and grow from this experience. Not just the fight itself, but also missing weight. And I think he's going to go back to the gym and uh, prepare even harder. He's got the tools. He's got the talent. He's got the temperament. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's in here trying. He's still trying to get that, that knockout. He's still trying to impress people. Despite the fact that it has been a frustrating night for Gomez. This is what Ochoa does. Makes you look ugly. Makes you earn everything. 29 years old, rugged veteran. 
some managers who stay away from a guy like Ochoa. Right, because it's almost impossible for your guy to look good. Twenty-one-year-old Hinato Game from San Diego, Southwestern High. Had to earn everything tonight. And that'll do it. They go the distance. Six good rounds. And you see a little bit of frustration on the face of Hinato Gamez. Coming over to shake hands with the corner. Not exactly the way that he expected it to go tonight. Controlled the fight. Had to earn every single round and you know, I mean he won the fight but he's he was tired at, at that bell he's tired normally they come back to the corner everybody's fired up yeah, yeah you saw the face of Robert Garcia the face of his dad Luis Gomez like we know we had to work tonight yeah, Gomez getting off as he, as he backs away from Ochoa does have good legs when he uses them it's a, a stiff jab that knocked Ochoa back into the ropes, followed it up with a, a sharp right hook. Sorry, sharp right cross. There's another right hand from Gomez. I think Gomez emptied the tank in that final round, and that's good. I don't think he should have, I don't think he should have been as tired as, as, as he appeared in the sixth round, but there's a mental fatigue there. And this is the first time he's had to fight six professional rounds and he was in with a frustrating opponent. It's uh, interesting that sometimes, you know, you, you look at your career, your comment only fought three professional fights, this was his fourth, goes to the distance in six, and I'm thinking, okay, you know what, I have Robert Garcia as my manager, there's a lot of great work in Riverside, could it be time to just say, let's make the move there with them, because Robert Garcia and also uh, Joel Diaz, the way they have it set up is they have their camp houses where these young fighters live there, like a, 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 dorm. a dorm, yeah, and where it's boxing all day long. They run together as a team. They go on excursions, whether it's bowling or going to the movies, something like that. Where it's boxing 24/7. Yeah, they're a team, and they 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 learn and they progress together. Oh, saludos a todos los que están mirando en los en Perico, Sinaloa y el Pachuco, familia de Genaro Gámez. You see, your fighter goes six rounds for the first time in his young career. But that's just something that happens in your career. Like, it's the father-son momentum. It's good for the beginning, but eventually. And it's good for that foundation. But, yep. you know, if, if you're going to move up the ranks as a professional, and you're going to be a hot prospect with aspirations of being a, a world-class fighter, a contender, or a title challenger, sometimes you got to bring in those proven world-class trainers. Well, also. And, and, and the proven world-class environments. Yep. It's going away. You see these professional champions now where they leave the comforts of home. Triple G, Big Bear. It's not exactly his home. Right. Uh, Oscar Valdez, who lives in Mexico. The owner of the Gobiernos, those fellas, and the Hendos, and the Wings, and then our fine fans after six rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Y todos de los jueces anotaron el mismo 60-54. All three judges have it. 60 to 54 for your winner by unanimous decision. El ganador por decisión unánime se mantiene invicto and still undefeated. Kenaro, el conde Game. He sweeps the cards. Gets the victory. Had to earn every single round tonight. Yeah, he, you know, he, he goes the distance for the first time, but at least he does so by shutout. Yeah. I thought a round or two could have gone to Ochoa. I actually scored the second round for Ochoa. But a great learning experience for, for Gomez. We're not jumping on the key. We're not harping too much. But this is what he's going to hear from his own management group. If you ask Genaro Gomez, he would tell you that he probably isn't satisfied with his performance tonight. Because when I talked to him at the weigh-in yesterday, he was real fired up. Yeah, look how look look how the fight yep. started. Exactly. You know, with the fist pump, and he's jumping up and down. He had a measured first round, and then tried to put it on Ochoa in rounds two and three. Ochoa answered back. Some nice body work from the veteran, the more mature club fighter, really. Yeah, but a high-level club fighter, because this club fighter has been in with so many prospects, some of whom hot prospects and prospects who are more advanced than Gomez. And it got rough in there. Yeah. And we saw some good stuff, you know, some good single punches from, from Gomez, like those uppercuts on the inside. But we also saw these headbutts, 
There was the low blow that Gomez uh, landed in a, in a previous round. It got a little rough, got a little wild in there. And that's going to happen. He's got to be, uh, he's got to learn from these experiences. That's a nice stiff jab to pack Ochoa up. And a really sharp right cross to follow it up with. Genaro El Conde Gomez gets the victory tonight. Improves the 4 0. Bethel Duran, Doug Fisher, that's the Santa Monica Pier, the main event. I don't think Tito Manzanares went to visit it. He was in LA for three weeks just working and sparring. Takes on former world champion Gama Platanito Diaz in the Michoacan, Mexico. So you're going to have Sinaloa and Mexico going at it. Eight rounds in the main event. Beth Duran, Doug Fisher back in Los Angeles, led by Will Wright tonight. As always, crack staff doing a great job for Golden Boy Media and Entertainment. The media tour next week for Canelo and Chavez hits the road. Make sure you check out the Golden Boy social media pages, the Facebook, the Snapchat, the, in, the Instagram, the, the drone. It's all going to be there, and you will be able to check out the press conferences from Mexico City, New York, Houston, and L.A. on Ring TV live.com that's going to be a good one go to the golden boy social media pages to check out information on pre-sale tickets because that week in las vegas is going to be fantastic cinco de mayo weekend in vegas always cool a canelo fight in vegas super cool a canelo chavez fight on cinco de mayo oh bring all the deals <laughs> bring all the tias everybody's going to be out in las vegas mexican it's, super bowl oh it's the Super Bowl, Grammys, Emmys, whatever you want. <laughs> Bring it on. Ramon Ayala is going to be playing on Friday night. Golden Boy will have boxing on Friday night. I'm not supposed to tell you that, but there's going to be some boxing Friday night somewhere in Las Vegas. The Grand Arrivals earlier in the week. Ring TV coverage will be there all week long from Las Vegas. And you want to go and check out the next Golden Boy fight. It'll be March 10th at the Velasco Theater. Christian Chimpa Gonzalez from Buena Park will be the main event. Nico Valdez, the beaver of boxing, as he calls himself. He'll be back in LA, leaving his confines of the 305 in Miami. And after that, ESPN on the Golden Boy gets going March 23rd from Fancy Springs Resort and Casino. Jason Quigley, El Animal, will be taking on Glenn Tapia. That'll be a good one to step up in competition for Quigley. That'll be the Golden Boy debut on ESPN TV. Then April 1st in Las Vegas, you'll be able to see Antonio Orozco and Keandre Gibson, a battle of two undefeated fighters. Our main event, Roberto Manzanares, Tito Manzanares, in Gama Diaz, El Platano will be going at it. Thanks to everybody sending the tweets. Linus, I know, quality win for uh, Gamas, but there's some flags raised. You know, you know that Robert Garcia is going to go back and work. Uh, Miss Fight Lady down in San Diego. Steve Kim watching. Everybody else. My brother Gabriel in Long Beach staying dry watching it on his big screen projector in the garage. I don't know how you are doing because it's really cold in your garage, bro. <laughs> and Doug Fisher's uh, news and notes. Always good. I mean, Steve Kim's news and notes. Go and check it out. His podcast on Mondays uh, with Mario Lopez. Always a good one. Also, you guys have been filming something, right, Doug? The With you, uh, uh, Mike Baca. Oh, right. The and 10 you, count. The 10 count. Yeah, UCN Live's 10 count. And Those are fun. Okay, where do you do that at? Because that looks cool. <laughs> it's in a cigar shop. It's called Hollywood Smoke, but it's in Santa Monica. It's a cigar <laughs> shop? Yeah, it's a cigar you shop. You guys get Steve Kim to wear shoes? Yes, we do. He leaves the chunklas at home and he goes Because store there. rules. Oh, okay. Yeah, he <laughs> has to. You have to. It's, it's a classy place. That's, a, that's cool, but you guys will be able to break down a lot of things coming up in the world of boxing. Now, your mailbag, Mondays and Fridays. If you guys want to get into it, what's the email for it? It's Dougie at BoxingMailbag.com. Don't be shy. I love first-timers. And what is the buzz right now? We have a little bit of a lull before some of the bigger fights coming up. There's a lot of buzz on the Kell Brook Errol Spence Jr. fight. Is that locked buzz. in? Is ready yeah, to go? Yeah, oh, May 20th, that's good. and it's going to be in England. Oh, oh, okay. So that's there. So fans, UK fans and hardcore US fans, are very excited about that matchup. That's in the welterweight division. Uh, fans are excited about another welterweight fight: Keith Thurman versus Danny, Danny Garcia. Garcia. Yeah. Of course, there's the Golovkin Jacobs middleweight showdown March 18. Uh, 
There's a lot going on. There's the, the, the heavyweight showdown between Anthony Joshua and Vladimir Klitschko. The fans are excited about all of these fights. I uh, got a tweet from Cynthia Morago in Spanish. Gomez pulled it off and gets going, but next time you could tell that he needs to get to 135, he looked tired at the end of that fight. So the fans are really aware of Everybody's what's Everybody's a on. critic, yeah, you know. Social media's critical. Um, but our oh, young but man got the job done. But our Ring TV Live fans know they're what's smart. up. Yeah, they, they know smart. What's up. They know what they're watching. If you're watching Ring TV Live, you're a dedicated boxer fan. And you know what's going on and there. You're you probably, should. it's going to be your first time seeing Manzanares for yeah. a lot of us. Um, that'll be my first time seeing him fight live. Yeah, I heard about it. He did a lot of the Pepe Gomez shows down in Mexico. Right. Marco yeah. uh, Palau. The Cancun Pal area. Yeah. Correct. Uh, Marco Palau, who does the accounting for Golden Boy, actually used to go down there. And he, he would always tell me, there's a kid down there named Tito. You're going to watch him. You're going to watch him soon. Finally, they worked out, talking with Roberto Diaz, about bringing him to the United States. Because in Mexico, this kid is a big deal. Yeah, he uh, uh, fights on, on TV. He's yeah. a TV fighter down there. Yeah, he's a TV fighter. He's a main event fighter down there making good money. But now, as you know this, you got to make the real money in the United States. Absolutely. Build your fan base. They feel, as Roberto said, he's 22 now. He's ready to take the step up in competition and fight primarily in the United States. So they're grooming him as a fighter that they can showcase in the United States. Yeah, if he looks good tonight, if he can look impressive against Gammy Diaz, a former world champion, um, he will be moved pretty quickly. He can go to main event status here in the U.S. And Desde Benasco Theater de Los Angeles, California, damas y caballeros, este es la pelea estelar de la noche. Ocho asaltos en el peso super ligero. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen, with the main event of the evening. Eight rounds of boxing this scheduled in the super lightweight division. Presentada por Oscar de la Hoya's Golden Boy Promotions y patrocinado por Tecate, Born Bold y Casa México Tequila, it's in the taste. Los tres jueces por ese combate, the three judges scoring this bout at ringside, Rudy Barragan, Jerry Cantu, and Ray Corona. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action encargado de ring, el referee Raúl Caiz. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the judges are ready and the fighters are ready. Los Angeles, make some noise if you are ready! Presentaron primero en la esquina azul con los padroncios blanco con azul y un peso de 138 libras. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing white, trimmed in blue, he weighed an officially 138 pounds. Un veterano con un record de 40 victorias, 15 derrotas, 3 empates y 19 ganadas por nocaut. This veteran has a record that stands at 40 victories, 15 defeats, 3 draws and 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former world champion from Michoacán, Mexico, Gamaliel, El Platano. Es operante en la esquina roja, con los padrocios azul con dorado y un peso de 137 libras y medias. His opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wears blue, trimmed in gold, and he weighed in officially 137 and one half pounds. Su record, 33 victorias, con una derrota, 27 ganadas por nocaut, 34 bouts as a professional, he has 33 victories, just one defeat, 27 big wins coming by way of knockout, presentando de los Mochis, Sinaloa, Mexico, and now fighting out of Phoenix, Arizona, Roberto Tito Manzanares. Ok, muchachos, les di las instrucciones allá abajo. El calzón está bien, perfectamente bien aquí, los golpes aquí se valen. Cuidado, atrás de la cabeza no se vale. Dense la mano y buena suerte a los dos. Raúl Caiz Sr., our third man in the ring. ring. He's worked a lot of championship fights over the years. They usually the downtown LA skyline. Yes, it is raining. Get the San Marcos out. Stay dry, stay warm. Here's the tail of the tape, Dougie. Yeah, obviously, Manzanares, the younger man, he's 22. Diaz is 36. Diaz has a slight height advantage, but Manzanares with a significant reach advantage.
We are underway. Tito Manzanares, he's in the blue with the gold trim. Got those UCLA colors. A little A clap for you. Former world champion, Platano Diaz. Platano Diaz is a banana in the white. Manzanares came to the United States three weeks ago. Lives in Los Mochis, Sinaloa. That's where he trains with his dad. His dad had visa issues, so he was unable to come with him. Jose Benavides, senior, is working with him in the corner. Yes, the father of Jose Benavides Jr. and David Benavides. Kind of reminds me of the Benavides brothers because he's so tall, rangy, and lanky. I wonder if he's got power like those guys. I mean, his record obviously would suggest that. Started boxing as a young kid. He grew up in Phoenix at the age of 12. His family decided to move back to Los Mochis, Sinaloa. At the age of eight, that's where he met the Benavides family in the Phoenix area. So he's very familiar with Jose being in his corner. His dad said he had no problem with him, with his son coming to the United States and able to fight because he trusts Jose Benavides. It's like a family figure with him, living with him in Long Beach. He actually came to the Rock Gym in Carson, and that's where they've been doing their camp for the last three weeks. Had great sparring last week with Scott Quigg. Those two went at it. Can't go wrong with the Quigster. He's a former world title holder. A slip. And you see Blatano complaining about that. Matt slipped a couple of times. Masanadas is southpaw. Doesn't speak much. Very quiet. But he is bilingual. He oh. speaks English. And he Spanish, speaks English obviously. better than he speak, speaks Spanish. Really? Yeah, his okay. English was. I was speaking to him in my broken Spanish, and he answers <laughs> me in English. I'm like, thanks, man. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Finally, I can speak my own. <laughs> but very quiet, just very methodical, goes straight to work. Not one of those guys that comes in with flair or flash. If you would, if you wouldn't know that this guy was the main event fighter, you're just like, okay, he's just a guy doing work in there. Right. No, He's no, in no, no. eight rounds main event no, no. Glasgow no, no. Theater, LA Fight Club main event. He can look good against Gammy Diaz. Who knows? His next fight could be a, an HBO Latino yep. co feature main event or an ESP hit main event. Okay. I told him two weeks ago when I was talking, I, like, I go to that gym and I, like, hey, you're going to be the main event. I am? Like, yeah, you're going to be on TV. I am? Like, didn't know, and, I, and he just seemed like he didn't even care. He, he, he just want to fight in the United States. It'd be the dream of his. Mom, Claudia Sandoval watching back home. Asusena Manzanares, his sister, watching in Los Mochis. Manzanares and Plato Diaz. In the main event tonight from Los Angeles. Showing uh, Joe Gonzalez, one of the recognition, first round KO for the young fighter out of Covina. He is now 4 0 with four KOs. That's what the, you see with the gray shirt standing there. Team Gonzalez, it's you, Joe. They're all boxing. They don't go home. No. They stick around and they watch the whole card. He and his brother, Joette, who's going to be fighting in Las Vegas maybe April 1st. Trained by the dad, Don Chewy. We're watching Tito Manzanares in the blue against Gama. Diaz from Michoacan, Gamaliel is his official name. Former world champion, and Doug doing the research, looking through, like, wait a minute. Linares, Cola, Humberto Soto also there. Yeah, that's another uh, three division title holder that he's, that he's faced, along with Linares uh, and uh, Robert Guerrero, who he split fights with. He handed the first defeat to Elio Rojas. 
He's been, I mean, he, this is a guy who's been on the world-class scene for 10, 11, 12 years, and he's really faced a who's who. So what I was doing, I know it's, I'm looking through this, I'm like, wait a minute, box wreck is two pages? Oh, I'm gonna have some fun tonight, because I love when we get to guys who've been there, Doug, and you could tell me the stories when you saw them and, and what they've done, and I'm like, okay, the who's who of names in that division, God, Diaz is just the dude, isn't he? He was the dude. Yeah, I don't know. His punch resistance doesn't look like it, it, it was what it used to be. He used to be known for his chin, known for his durability. He was a grinder. I'm seeing there's something missing from his legs, almost like his equilibrium is off. He's 36 years old, far removed from those battles with uh, Takahiro or Takashi Mira, Anthony Colo. He also had a scrap with Peter Petrov. Yeah, and he went the distance with Petrov. He's traveled the world. I think he, he fought the, uh, the European champ in, in Italy. He went to Emiliano Marcini in Italy. I believe, yeah, uh, that guy is the European champion. And uh, Saru Hanya in Russia last year in October. Fought Tevin Farmer. Yep, Tevin Farmer. A dangerous contender, French contender, very talented. Got dropped three times in that 10 rounder. Got up and finished the bout. But at some point, a veteran's being battle tested becomes being battle worn. Yeah. You gotta be careful. And who knows if he's on the edge of that cliff. We'll see if uh, Manzanares can push him off that cliff if he is. 22 year old. Roberto, oh, actually, as you told me, it's not Roberto, it's Robert. Robert, Robert. Tito Manzanares. As a Humberto, I appreciate you becoming just a Robert. Get rid of that O. He's in there. His half-brother, Miguel, is in his corner tonight for Manzanares. Miguel Gonzalez, nice pop. But he has. It's also signed with Golden Boy. Good one, two for Manzanares. I'm seeing a decent pop from Manzanares. I'm not seeing world-class power. Yes, I'm in the like I'm no, what I'm seeing is, is a boxer. Somebody who likes to use his height, his reach, control distance, and set up his shots. Exchange body shots as they block arms, grapple a little bit on the inside. Manzanares obviously at his best from the uh, outside and lands a left right combination. Backs away from the, uh, you gotta hit him with the hand, can you tell him? We'll hit with the palm. Third round of action. Tito Mantanares, the southpaw. Said he could switch, but he's comfortable as a lefty. Favorite fighter growing up, Oscar De La Hoya. He's an honor sign with Golden Boy Promotions. Mantanares, the southpaw. Asked him, you know, what else do you like? Baseball, soccer? He's like, no, not really. I'm like, so what, you're not a Real Madrid soccer fan, a Blue de Cuervos fan? You know, he's like, baseball, you know, Los Mochis, a lot of baseball players. Like, right. No. So what do you like? Boxing. <laughs> Just, he's all boxing, yeah. Yeah, he's all boxing. Like, yeah, I kind of watch it, but not really. And like, You have to have that focus, he said. Believe me, it was like pulling teeth talking to this kid for the last two weeks. Also didn't help that he doesn't like getting bothered at the gym and <laughs> be that guy there. <laughs> you, you he's gonna like have that, to get though. yeah, he's gonna have to get used to it. He's got the, the professional experience where who knows, maybe in another fight or two, he could be taking on the winner of that April first showdown that you spoke of between Antonio Orozco and Keandre Gibson. Those guys are junior welterweights. They are junior welterweight contenders slash fringe contenders. He's got the record of a contender. He isn't. Look at Plata Jose. Come on. The right little, little smirk in his face. I wonder if uh, boxing from the orthodox stance, if Manzanares would have a stiffer jab. Just kind of flicking that, that right jab out. From the southpaw stance, he doesn't really snap that jab. 
just kind of trying to be pesky with it. Maybe, maybe he's got a lot of power with his left, and he's just looking to land big left hands. But I'd like to see a stiffer jab. You mentioned DeAndre Gibson and Tony Roscoe, throwing the boy, matching up their own together. Somebody's always got to go. It's, you know each other, you're friendly, it's not a team. It's a tough fight to call. I don't know who wins that fight. Well, that's, that's, the kind of fight that, that's the kind of fight that uh, hardcore fans get excited about. That's why hardcore fans are excited right now. They're excited about, you know, uh, Joshua Klitschko and, and Canelo Chavez and, and Brooke Spence because yeah. they're not quite sure who's going to win. And that's the same thing we got with this uh, Orozco Gibson fight. I, you know, Orozco's got more experience, it's a little more advanced, but, but Gibson's got a lot of talent. And also, Orozco moving up in division. Right. His last fight went to the hospital because he couldn't make his weight. Not for lack of trying. It just so it's body. not junior welterweight, it's going to be a welterweight. Yeah, they're moving up. A push. At least I was told they're moving up. No, that's, that's probably a smart thing to do. Final seconds of the third round. Tito Manzanares, Platano Diaz. Main event, the Velasco Theater in downtown Los Angeles. I think in this round we can stop it. Listo, 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 okay? Si ves que no puedes, te me sales. You don't think you can't okay? step back. Desde el primer round, para agarrar un poquito, te va a confiar un poquito, okay? Pero tírame más ganchos al cuerpo. Our hooks to the body. Well, they Benavides tell him finish it here. So in Benavides' eye, Diaz has been worn down. But I don't think Manzanares has put much. I think this was the much in the way of physical punishment on the veteran fighter. From what I was understanding, I think this was the plan. We'll get a couple rounds and then unload. And maybe kind of lull the veteran into a sort of false sense of security yeah. and then unload the power. Well, you heard their word confianza, the, right. the confidence. He had that sense of confidence. In Dallas, Texas, Nacho Zuniga Sr. Lo está mirando. Saludos, señor. Gracias por mirando por Ring TV. Está mirando, muchachos, los mochis. Yes. Tito Manzanata is also a true boxing. Appreciate all the support you guys have for us. As always, watching and retweeting Doug Mailbag. Most important thing. Retweet all of Doug's articles. Somebody has to. Yeah, I, I, I favored him. Fourth round, Manzanata is a southpaw. He is sneaky with that left hand, and in a way that I don't like the flicking jab, but it does blind the veteran a little bit momentarily for him to land that left. He is six foot 137. Renato Gomez, a co feature, 5'6, 138. <laughs> Differences in body. Yeah, you can see Masanada just in there, that confidence in him, keeping the hand down. He's had it down the last couple of rounds. Yeah, Tito is comfortable. You can tell he doesn't feel like he's uh, in any danger. You just mentioned that flicking of the jab. That's it. Well, Kais Jr. told him, don't throw the back hand. Right, that's illegal, the back hand. Ooh, he, he threw that left with conviction. If he lands that to the body of the veteran, he might see a knockdown. He might see a stoppage. That platano is going to split. That banana is going to be ripped. Blood, a little bit of a mouse underneath the right eye. With the former world champion Diaz. Sonata had to get his passport to come to the United States. And keep those passports ready. Doug, you gotta keep it ready if you're gonna go to England and watch another fight. It's true. I'm good. You never know. I, I had to get a new one just like you did before we went to Montreal <laughs> for the David right. Lemieux uh, Hassan and Dom fight. Oh, oh down, down he goes. Shot. There it is. Benavides Cuatro, knew what he was talking cinco, about. That delayed seis, body shot. Siete, and I don't think he's getting up, Doug. Ocho, nueve, diez. It is over. A stoppage. Fourth round body shot and for Tito Manzanares. He took his time, took his time, calmado, calmado, and he ended it. 
knocks out the former world champion, Platano Diaz. Oh, he is in pain. That is a 22-year-old hook coming at your body. When you're 36, Doug, you mentioned it, those miles, that toll, and here it is. Yeah. Oh! oh, and it was on the sweet spot. Oh! And he was, he, he had started to load up with the left to the body just as his trainer told him to do, because Benavides told him to do between rounds. He missed a couple of them, and you knew if that, that shot that lands, delay. he's going to go down, and he did it. He finally landed it. That delay is what got him. The young man barely broke a sweat. Yeah. I mean, the face is clean. He was in control the entire time. It wasn't dynamic stuff. I mean, no. he didn't go out there and just tear apart the veteran fighter. He took his time. He set that trap. And he is dead. He is a, a southpaw boxer puncher. That's how I would. That's how I would describe him. And the power isn't evident from the onset. It's not like everything he throws is powerful. He's kind of sneaky with it. Yeah, he's warning him by flicking that jab with the backhand. He's like, I was this close to taking a point away from you. Hey. There's also different referees in the United States. They look at it different than they do at the Pepe Shoals in Mexico. That body shot, though. 36, right on the ribs. That might be the end of a very distinguished career. Heck of a career. Yeah, Gammy Diaz has seen all phases. He's been a prospect. He's been the opponent. He's been the fringe contender, the gatekeeper, the world-class contender, the title holder. Finally, you know, the journeyman. And when you go out with it against a 22-year-old, a lot of potential in him. Well, it says something that Manzanares was able to take him out, whereas uh, Peter Petrov, who we know is a beast, a grinder, couldn't stop him. Tevin Farmer couldn't stop him. Emiliano Marsili, the European champion, unbeaten in a lot of fights, couldn't stop him. Zanaris gets it done. He does it with a single body shot. As we hear Joe Martinez chatted up with the Tecate gal. I don't think that's Joe. <laughs> it's somebody who needs to realize the microphones are always hot. <laughs> that is not Joe. Joe's, Joe's smart about that. He turns off his mic. If you're ever anywhere, remember, the microphones are always hot. I forget that. I tend to forget that. I always remind people. I always remind people that uh, Doug Fisher never says anything wrong. <laughs> now Steve Kim, on the other hand, always says it right. Yeah, but you you get blamed for it, but um, hey, it don't matter, baby. Sometimes you get those phone calls. As long as the check <laughs> clears, I will let him know to go to Will Wright. He will answer all complaints. Complaint department for Will Wright. You email Dougie. At boxingmailbag.com. That is all complaints right there for you. Because, I, Doug, I can't even imagine the email oh, yeah. that you get about I don't mind complaining. complainers. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it keeps things interesting. But you get the people complaining about articles that you didn't even write. Oh, yeah. <laughs> complaining about everything. Like, oh, the audio is off. Well, I'm the camera guy. Why are you yeah. playing with me? <laughs> now, graphics, we complain about graphics. Damas y caballeros, dos minutos 23 segundos del cuarto asalto de referee llega la cuenta de 10. El ganador por knockout, the end comes officially, 2 minutes, 23 seconds, round number 4. We have your winner by KO Victory in his U.S. debut, Roberto Tito Manzanares. 22 years old, living in Los Mochis, Sinaloa, born in Phoenix, Arizona. U.S. debut, look good with a fourth round stoppage, just like his corner told him to do. It's a good looking record, 34 wins, one loss, which he avenged, 28 knockouts. Looks like he has a lot of boxing ability, he's been sure for his age, obviously. Next time I see this guy, I'd like to see him fight a Gamaliel Diaz type, but not somebody who's a former champion at 130. I'd like to see him fight a former junior welcome.
welterweight champion, somebody his own size, but with more experience. Talking with Roberto Diaz, the most interesting matchmaker in the world that you see him in the black. He, uh, he said the plan for him is to move quickly to the United States because we know what he has. It's not like a guy you have to baby and take care of because of the amateur, not the amateur, but the experience in Mexico. It really helped him out. And now that his piece is all taken care of, now that he's here in the United States, Get him going and with that ESPN series that Golden Boy now has and with the pay-per-views coming, the most interesting man right there in the neutral corner with all black. This is something that the fighter, if you look at Golden Boy stable right now, you have Canelo, world champion, a cash cow out there for you. Then you have a lot of young kids with the Virgil Ortiz, the Caesar D, the, the Chief, but the kids who are still club show main events, but who aren't ready to be that top tier middle fighter. A fighter like Manzanares, that record, let's go. He, along with those fighters like Jojo Diaz, you need those kind of kids to have right there. And he's at least, he's, I think he's ready for at least HBO Latino, ESPN2, ESPN level fights. Co-feature remain event, depending on how tough he's, he's put in. Earlier this evening, making his pro debut, Javier Martinez. We're going to try to squeeze it in here. Six rounds, so you can check out this fighter from Dallas, Texas. We'll pick it up in the second round. Scheduled for six between Martinez and very tough veteran Miguel Barajas. Those left hooks to the body. And that's what Ben Lira wants more from Martinez. He wants more body work here in the second round. Ben Lira. Legendary in Southern California boxing circles. He's now the main man for Javier Martinez. He's also in the corner of Luis Feliciano, who will make it his debut later on tonight, the fighter out of Milwaukee. And Lira, I know I've seen him recently. Yes, he is in the corner of Joseph Diaz Jr. Joseph Sr. is the main trainer. Then Lira, the sage advisor, working with him. And Jojo Diaz with the big news coming. He's tweeting that I got big news. Well, send us the news ready, Jojo. Let us know what's going on. Well, right now we're watching Javier Martinez and Miguel Barajas. Make sure you use the hashtag RingTVLive. Send us your tweets, Durant Sports and Dougie Fisher. As Linus, our man in Philadelphia, who's also our, our quasi amateur scout, said uh, Linus, the Team X Javier, the Twitter for Javier Martinez, say he likes to bang. Known that from his Pan Am day. So this is his style, what he likes to do. And in the pro, it kind of benefits him, right, Doug? Absolutely like to go to the body if you like to sit on your punches better suited for the professional ranks than the amateur ranks. Uh, Barajas is a competent boxer box a little bit obviously he likes to stand and bang obviously he can take it I don't think his hands are as heavy or as sharp as Martinez's hands he kind of loops his punches more but he's a scrapper he's a grinder and he's getting some work done forcing Martinez back into a neutral corner or, I'm sorry into the blue corner you're right Doug you said in the first round most guys your pro debut to give you somebody who's going to give you the least amount of resistance and Miguel Barajas is coming in here to let his hands go and try to upset. Got a line on his line also. He's two and one. And some punches at times. And you'll notice that Barajas has those Cleto Reyes gloves. Which you thought me that's that puncher's glove. You can make a nice tight fist with those gloves. I, I, I like the effort from both fighters. Oh, yeah. Good opening bout here. Another great addition, the Velasco Theater, the LA Fight Club. Baraja set the tone at the opening bell, and neither fighter has backed off since. Oh. Martinez answered in kind, and he's landing the cleaner shots. He's got the tighter technique. He's landing punches between the winging shots of Barajas. But Barajas remains game, and he's still working. I think he's lost this round, but he was competitive in this round. Also working his Martinez. Nice, quick, compact punches. 
And that is going to get counted. That's going to count. That's going to count. <laughs> right at the bell, Zach Young is like, no, no, no. That went down, kicking everybody out. Six. Martinez. Eats a punch, goes down right at the bell. His gloves did touch. And this is a, okay. This Doug, is, you were just saying, that was a round for Barajas. Yeah, he wins this round now. It was, I was saying Barajas was, was very competitive in the round, but he takes the round by scoring that knockdown. And he may have taken it by a 10-8 margin, which is significant in a scheduled six-round bout. Let's see this knockdown. This knockdown. Landed high on the head. He was off balance. And that punch landed right before the bell, so... Referee is within his uh, rights to call it a knockdown. He was kind of off balance and got hit. They hear him say he was off balance and got hit. He might have also heard that bell. You know, you ease up. You're right, Doug. This one is scheduled for six rounds. Yeah, if this was a, a schedule for four rounds, I Danger. would say the young man's record is in jeopardy because it's very hard to bounce back from a 10-8 round into the scheduled four-round fight. Miguel Barajas coming in, looking for the upset. The fighter in black from Guadalajara, Mexico. He is 2-1 in his career. His second bout got the stoppage. His last time in the ring suffered his first loss to Michael Morato here in California. Get off his head. And I think Martinez's pride was ruffled a little bit. Getting right up against his opponent, chest to chest, forehead to forehead. Maybe he's fighting with a little bit of uh, emotion, more emotion than he had in the first round. And I like the poise that he had in round one. Now it looks like he's swinging, like he's trying to get some payback here. And that could play into the hands of his opponent. Third round of action, Javier Martinez making his pro debut from Dallas, Texas. Got the white trunks. The Mexico trim. There it is, Barajas in the black. Uppercuts being landed by both fighters. Martinez matched up tough here in his pro debut. This is not what they expected in your pro debut. It was just surprising that Doug, in his debut, he gets six rounds. That should tell you what they think of him, that yes. they're bringing him up that quick. But he went down at the end of the second, got caught, and now he's eating some more punches from the veteran Miguel Angel Barajas. Yeah, it's become a, a, a physical affair. I don't think that's what Ben Lira wants in the corner. We're, we're seeing his medal being tested in his pro debut. And so that's a good thing. We know the guy's an action fighter. We know he's got the instincts of a fighter. He goes down, he wants to get up. He wants to, to assert control uh, of the fight. But I think he could be boxing a little bit smarter here in the third round. I think he could utilize a little bit of um, distance, a little bit of lateral movement, work his jab, and throw in the hard punches when he sees the openings, you see his face. There's blood in his mouth. He shouldn't be bleeding uh, from the mouth. He really shouldn't. And out of his pro debut, eats a he's left He's getting kind of wild. Yeah, he's. I don't. You know, he's lost his poise. This he's, is the kind of guy you fight when you're eight and zero, not a zero and zero. Rafa Radia, his manager, decided to take this one. Well, the, and the thing is, 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 you know, it was a Look flash knockdown. And what? It wasn't like. Martinez was hurting around. It's not like he's in jeopardy of losing the fight. It's a six round fight, but he's out here fighting like this is the last round. Like he has yeah. to win this round to win the fight. That's not really the case. Um, I think that's something they need to kind of settle him down for his, his, his next professional fight. But uh, this is great stuff for the fans. Yeah, great for the fans. Great for Barajas who's making a name for himself. Yes. It shouldn't be this tough in your pro debut. Out. 
it was a torrid pace in round three. Body work from young Martinez, working both sides of the body. Maybe stunned Barajas with that punch, forces the older man into the ropes. Fourth round, it's scheduled for six. Making his pro debut, Javier Martinez in. And Javier Martinez went on to get the fourth round stoppage over Miguel Barajas, kid out of Dallas, Texas. Impressive debut. He was matched up very hard. He got the victory. Yeah, it was hard earned, but he, you see the mentality that he had. Could have outpointed him, but he forced that stoppage. Recap of tonight, Luis Feliciano, the Boricua, gets the victory decision. And Aro Gomez had to work all six rounds against veteran Alex Ochoa. Got the unanimous decision. And Gomez weighing 138 pounds. Trouble making weight at the scales. Got to it. And trouble putting away Alex Ochoa. But he swept the cards. Learning experience for the young 21-year-old out of San Diego. As Alex Ochoa rugged uh, every single time in that ring. Our main event, Roberto Manzanares, Tito fighting for the first time in the United States. Drop Gama Diaz and the former world champion unable to get up to his feet after getting hit with a severe body shot right there. Took that knee, a delayed reaction right on the ribs, and that was it. Manzanares now 34 and 1. For everybody at Golden Boy Promotions, David Tatrell, Executive Vice President, our Founder and Chairman and Hall of Famer, Oscar DeLoya. For Doug Fisher, Will Wright, everybody on the crew, I'm Bethel Duran saying thank you and good night from Los Angeles.